What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Monkey Trap. Who's in the trap today? And away we go. One large pepperoni, hamburger, and jalapenos. Sounds awesome. And uh, one large pepperoni. And yeah, just pepperoni. And then uh, go ahead and throw. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's enough. Yeah, for delivery. Yeah, or is it, I'm going to pay cash, but is it quicker if I come get it or if you deliver it? Excuse me? Is it faster if I come get it or if you deliver it? What delivery, yeah. Is, which one's faster, if I come get it or you deliver it? Oh, um, I'll make it real quick, like uh, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 20, 20 to 25 minutes. Okay, and, and that's you bringing it here? Okay. okay. All right, thank you. <laughs> He's been delivering pizzas here for like <laughs> six years. I don't think he understood that I don't think he had any all. fucking idea what you were now, saying. Now, here's the <laughs> Well, let's have a little bit of fun while we're waiting on the pizza. It'll take him 20, 30 minutes. So give us a couple beers. Uh, well, wait a second. Whoa, 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 whoa. Just turn it on. Let's go. Oh, we've been going. I recorded the pizza phone call. Oh, okay. <laughs> but were you going before that? Uh, I started when you dial. Oh, okay. So if, if we're going to... Hey, millennial beer assistant. Thanks, Millennial Austin. Millennial beer assistant, MBS. We're going to come up with something better. That's the king of Saudi. I MBS? <laughs> MBA. No, that is not the king of Saudi. MBA. I, I just went straight for the ass. I like a lot of ass. Yeah. Well, we all go straight for the ass. Thanks, man. Go. Now, see, let me, let me have your empty beer can. I don't, I don't know where I put mine. See, the, the, the deal is, is that if I'm looking right, so... Yeah, there we go. So the camera's right there. We'll just and start. our attempt is to stack, once we have stacked enough beer cans to block the view of the camera that's Holy filming us, fuck. then we can leave. <laughs> Does that work for you? How's that for a drinking game? Sounds like a drinking game. And here's the, here's the deal. You can get out of here as fast as you want to. Just drink up. This could be 20 minutes if you need it to be. <laughs> All right, Cord Newman. What uh, is up? I am going to tell you that uh, I'm really excited about this because... You are the first guest to be welcomed in to the monkey trap. All right. So you are now not only been trapped, but I'm officially nominating you as the very first trapster. All right. So go out and find other trapsters and bring them forth with, with post haste. I can do that. Yes, I know. I so, uh, the, the deal with the monkey trap is, uh, that we, uh, we want to be able to have some fun with everything that is, that, see, that's, I'm thinking about making that my anthem. Dude, I, it's the only anthem I understand. Cheers, my Cheers, brother. Cheers, bro. First one. I know. So we had a hell of a time yesterday. That was good. Mm-hmm. Well, so for those of you that don't know this gentleman here, it's because he's usually behind the scenes because he's so freakishly ugly. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, he makes some of the coolest uh, content out there as far as uh, movies and, and television stuff. And, I mean, look at the list. He's a stuntman, everyone. A freaking stuntman. And, uh, you know, that's, uh, that's a pretty crazy uh, occupation. Yeah, it definitely uh, has its ups and downs. But you've been in a ton of stuff. You've been doing this your, basically your whole life, right? Yeah, I started uh, when I was 19 years old. And uh, I started working with a guy named Glenn Wilder. And Glenn started a few other guys that we all know and love, like Burt Reynolds and Lee Majors and all that. So he pause. also... When you say Burt Reynolds, you always have to pause. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. It's, 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 it's just... It's necessary. You've seen my Burt Reynolds oh, I love your Burt shrine Reynolds. over here. Dude, okay. That we'll is... show y'all kids that one day. <laughs> but anyway, so Gene Wilder turned you into some other... No, not Glenn or Wilder. Glenn Wilder, yeah. Okay. Gene Wilder would have been a whole other type of film. You could have still been lost in the chocolate factory or something. <laughs> I'm hearing no evil and seeing no evil, but no, the, uh, Glenn, Glenn started me out and, um, I got a couple well, wait, of real lucky breaks. How does he just start you out? He's like, Hey man, you want to come jump off a building or something? You look like a type. All right. That's fair enough. So I was, I played football in college and then, uh, my parents decided to move to Florida and through a big, crazy, wow, that was nice. Don't worry about that. it, man. We're still, we're still getting all this I, adjusted. I, uh. Through this a, will be uh, really nice when I start getting beautiful people in here. I know. It'll be better because then you can actually use the camera footage. <laughs> the, um, uh, but no, I, I moved to Florida with my parents then, and I was there a few days, and I wound up meeting this girl 
that uh, played it beach volleyball. Always goes my back sister. to a girl. It, it it my whole life has been dictated by. Well, I, you just yeah, <laughs> dictated by girls. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, which I am in love with my new wife, but we'll come back to that. Oh, you'll get over that soon enough. <laughs> oh my god, that's I mean, terrible. <laughs> I know how that new love goes. Wait, till you've been in that motherfucker for like fifteen or eighteen years. <laughs> I've had a nine year. That was good. It wasn't, yeah. but no. So, um, but yeah, no, so I, I went down to Florida. We, I met this girl. I went, wound up going to a movie with her and standing in the line at this movie theater, this lady that was in front of me, she kind of looked like the, the, uh, chick from, what was it? Friends where Joey's, uh, Joey's agent. Jennifer she, Aniston? No, not, no. God, I would have I would have left all of them, the girl I was with for that girl. But no, the, the girl that was uh, Joey's um, agent. And she's like, hi, Joey, I got you a part. Well, this lady standing in front of us at the theater turns around and she's like, Oh my God, have you ever thought about modeling? And I started cracking up laughing <laughs> and I went like this. And I'm like, no. And she goes, oh God, not that. I mean this. Because I had an eight pack stomach and well, how did she see this? While you're, were you wearing a half shirt? I was wearing tight a tight shirt. I mean, you're... I was nineteen and full of myself, so I thought I was cool. <laughs> so uh, I said to her, "I was like, uh, what?" And she goes, "It'll it it pays one hundred and twenty five bucks an hour, and we can put you on this catalog." And I was like, "Well." Yeah, well, and I mean, she was right. They filmed me from here to my knees. And, and now we're both in the same one ab club. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a keg. Yeah. It's like a little party bowl. Yeah. There you go. So but, uh, so that was the start of it. And so let's just go to day. What was your first stunt? Uh, okay, so, well, when I was on Something About Mary, I wound up meeting one of the stunt guys. So you went from just like there to being in stunts. Yeah, because while I, I was like, something about America, well, let me guess, you were the dog that they threw out the wind in the cast. Yeah, I was puffy. <laughs> I still have nightmares about the lady that she was, uh, the, the, the lady Magda. that had the dog. Magda. Magda. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, that was rough. Well, I saw the prosthetic tits that they put on her when, before they put them on. Those were tragic. Uh. And then when I saw them on the lady, I'm like, I know I shouldn't be staring. This is so inappropriate, but that is horrible you know what, what one God's sagging name? tit says to the other oh boy what if we get any lower people will think we're nuts <laughs> <laughs> you know ron white has one of my favorite jokes on the planet because he's like well you know once you've seen one boob you, you want to see the rest of them that's right <laughs> <laughs> so uh you were on something about mary yeah awesome show i mean funny all the way through it couldn't have been better written or better done i mean just dude the Farley brothers were awesome i doubt i don't even know if they remember me but they were phenomenal they were so nice to me had me sat down i sat down next to ben stiller had some speaking lines with him and uh that kind of kicked the whole thing off and I felt weird in front of the camera and I started talking to some of the stunt guys and, and my dad and I had a custom car shop. So I invited my coordinator out to see the shop and over the course of the next year and a half or so, I wound up building him a Jeep uh, Scrambler, actually like the one you've got. I happen to have one for sale. You and saw it just a second ago. Yeah, I may have to actually wind up putting that in the trailer I brought. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I wound up building him a Scrambler. I had a 468 big block in it, did a three color pearl flame job on it with my dad. And, um, and then he came to pick it up and he said, you know, what do I owe you? And I said, work. There you go. Get me some work. And he looked at me. He was like, all right, done. I'll get yeah. you some work. So then I wound up in Bad Boys 2 and Fast 2 and a bunch of other stuff and did a bunch of TV shows with Artie. And, um, you were in the Fast out. and Furious? Uh, well, wait a second. Let's back up yeah. one because I got a little, uh, you know, I got to go tit for tat with my, the people that I bring on here. <laughs> you know, the Farley Brothers. Is that is it Farley? Farley Brothers. Farley, however yeah. you say it. So I did a series of commercials with one of them. He did the Dodge commercials that I did when, um, I want to say it was when I was doing the, uh, the lawman, law, oh, law dude. man Dodge commercials where we, uh, it was like, it was almost like something about like, it was like, uh, Ted, the movie, but I had this little monkey that, uh, <laughs> yeah, you're really sucking at this. I said, look up the, uh, <laughs> Dodge lawman, Richard Rawlings commercials. And, uh, <laughs> They were pretty funny, and uh, and I think I also worked with him. If it wasn't those commercials, and I worked with him when I did uh, 
uh, who's the guy? Uh, Knight Rider. Uh, Hasselhoff. There, there we go. Hasselhoff. Play that. That's excellent. Oh, dude, I love this commercial. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> Dude, that's rad. Pretty good. Was, now, you know, was that Peter or Bobby Farley Peter. that did that? Peter. Holy I, I, crap. I, I, I'm not, I can't remember for sure if it was that one or the one with uh, Hasselhoff but, uh, that I did on the beach where uh, uh, th those were pretty funny too. Uh, he says, uh, the seas are angry. Uh, but uh, I actually um, I met David Hasselhoff very briefly. My producer partner Randy Turow oh, is uh, oh boy. They're gonna edit this and make it look. <laughs> no, no, it's good. It's good. <laughs> hey, there's three pedals in that one. That's better. <laughs> <laughs> This is a freaking commercial for Dodges. <laughs> Look, I found the backup. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> See, that's what got me into film Look right there. That's how you that's how you spot sharks. <laughs> oh. That's just, that's just Dude, a lot he's of work. Such a nice guy. But that's a lot of work for a commercial. That's Get a that fucker off my screen. What the hell? <laughs> So anyways, uh, they'll cut all that bullshit into something else, but uh, let's get back to uh, whatever the hell we were talking about. Well, Rolling. David Hasselhoff, uh, my partner, Randy Turow, has been working on picking up the Knight Rider series. and they Again? Are, Haven't they done that like 17 times? Yeah, but don't say that because they're asking me to be the Knight Rider guy. They want me to play the Hasselhoff guy. I don't see that. Yeah, it's good. It, they need somebody less attractive so that they can have someone that's, you know, part of mainstream. I, no, I don't get this logic. I think it's no. about budget. They didn't, you know, yeah, you don't command what Hasselhoff would command. My car was battery powered. What do you mean? I mean, I'm, you're going to be I'm an EV a, it was, uh, it was night a rider? Wheels. Oh, I see. It's all it's a, you, said, you said it was about the budget, so I ran with it. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a power wheels, not a real I, car. I, I, would, I would like to put you in one of those power wheels. I bet you it goes like this. The wheels pop <laughs> out. Hey, I'm, but, only, uh, I'm only 250. Okay, so you were on something about Mary. Yep. And what did you do? Uh, I, I said me too. That was my very first line. And in uh, a movie. In a movie, yeah. I said me too. Look and at that. The, the, you don't even Mary. appear on the short clips. No, or anything. God, I wouldn't. I'm I'm about ten. Are you minutes. sure you're telling the truth? Yeah, you can. You can if you want. It's, it says hour fifty nine. About ten minutes into it, you're sitting underneath a tree with Ben Stiller and uh, and myself, and uh, sign in to confirm your age. <laughs> I told you. <laughs> I told you something How about Mary. How old are the guys that are running this? They're, they're, they, I call them millennials because that's all I know, but they say they're like something even before millennials. Y's or Z's or Q's, I don't know. I think Y makes a lot of sense. Why? Like, you, why do you, we you know, have them? You know what a millennial... I love you guys. You know, you, know what millennial, you know what millennials actually do? No. Neither do I. I Nobody know. does. It's like gluten. <laughs> Every, nobody has a clue what it yeah, does. Yeah, but we're all allergic to it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm allergic to COVID. So um, mm. you get rolling. Now you're going to be a stunt man. So yeah. let's talk about like the first stunt. Well, Dangerous shit too. Not like you fell over a tree because some prima donna actor didn't want to. <laughs> yeah. So the, uh, the first big stunt I got to do that uh, uh, was brought to me by a friend of mine. It was for a telenovela. It was for... Uh, oh, I love telenovela. Telemundo. I do. I love those. Actually. I mean, those girls are beautiful. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's true. I mean, you, you, go, you go look at the trash daytime... Uh, uh, what do they call them? Uh, the soap show. operas. Soap operas. That's the word I was looking for. And look at the ones they put on in America. And then go look at the ones <laughs> down in, in Spanish-speaking countries. Yeah. Yeah, Boy, that's true. I can't speak Spanish, and I just sit there and watch. I, I'm, I'm willing to learn. Yes. Okay, I mean, so now. it was for a novella. <laughs> yeah, it was for a telenovela. My friend called me and he goes, uh, hey, I need you to come down and do safety on this show. And I said, okay, great. His name was Omar. Really phenomenal guy. He was a cop part-time and then he was a stunt coordinator for telenovelas. So the, the guy worked his butt off. So I drove down to <laughs> this location in Miami and I didn't have any idea what the hell I was doing. And uh, 
we're standing out there in the street and they've got this car rigged up ready to do this pipe ramp off the front of a taxi cab so they've got a pipe welded to the front of this taxi and a taxi runs into the intersection and then the guy driving which at that point was not me had to come up and hit this thing and do this pipe ramp and, and then he lands upside down and skis. then he yeah he does a little roll and lands and whatever it looks cool and the cars had the motor and tranny pulled out of it so they're using the push car a lot of old school stuff that i didn't know anything about and, and i learned rapidly so the the night wanes on and we wind up at like one o'clock in the morning and we still haven't done the gag and we're sitting around like, you know, what the heck's going on? And this guy that's supposed to be the dude driving it, everybody's talked him up about what a badass he is. And he's, I found out later that the guy was just a complete clown. But um, he's just walking around and he's talking about, oh, it's not right yet. It's not right yet. I got to feel it. I got to have the emotion. I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> I'm get in the car and crash it, man. <laughs> so finally, we go to the, the director, Omar, he looks at him and he's like, fuck this man it's now it's either now or you're not doing it that's your option and he looks at me he's like fine he goes and gets in his truck and leaves <laughs> and so we're all standing there and omar he, he, you know this is a guy using his police retirement to fund his first major motion picture that he's producing and stunt coordinating. so he's in like a whole dire distress like he's freaking out like i don't know what to do with myself and he goes well who's gonna drive this car and i'm like i'll do it he goes, have you done any pipe ramps? Okay, so four hours before that, I was asking the caterer guy what the fuck a pipe ramp was because they kept talking about it, and I hadn't seen the other car yet. I had never even heard of it. I didn't know what the heck any of I that crap was. So I'm like, yeah, man, I've done those before. And he goes, really, you've done those? I'm like, I've done like three. <laughs> I, again, never knew what it was. So immediately I hang up, the, I, I walk away from him, and I call up this guy that I had just met, Mike Curtin, and I had met him with Glenn. And I said, uh, I may have got myself in a little bit of something, man. Are you uh, are you near Miami? And he's like, I'm in West Palm Beach, which is hours away, hour and a half. Yeah, away, it's yeah. an hour and a half, two hours. So he's like, I'll throw my kid in the car. His little boy Tashi was asleep with him. And he's like, I'll, I'll throw my kid in the car. I'll bring all my gear. I'm going to come help you out. I was like, what the frick? So he jumps his car, hauls ass down there. I stall him until like 3.30 in the morning. He gets there, throws a set of belts in because I didn't even know what to check. He's looking at he's like, these belts are shit. He grabs the belts that were in there and was physically able to pull them out with his hand. That would have sucked. So that <laughs> would have been a negative. And throw those, throws those out. And then he throws these so new belts He did belts this in. thing. Yeah, I got yeah, you. Yeah, Keep that's going. A pipe ramp. There okay, you go. okay, I get it now. I was and, thinking uh, like a giant. <coughs> we're on the inside of a pipe, but yeah, go ahead. No, the, the, like uh, actually, the one in the middle. Uh, actually, I'd, I'm probably ninety four percent sure that I've, you know, done that one. Actually, that very one. Um, everybody builds their ramps a little bit different. Like you can see in that bottom left corner, they've used a piece of C channel. Uh, most guys use round tube. Uh, like a Schedule 120 round tube, so it's Okay, thick. that's way too technical. Let's get I back. Know, so now you're getting so, thrown in the car. <laughs> so I get in the put car. put the seatbelts on. How do you feel? I mean, you haven't done this. You don't I, even know I, what a pipe ramp is. I didn't know what it was, but I wasn't real stressed out about it because, you know, when you don't know how bad it's going to hurt, you don't really know what to be worried about. And I had You're been, worried about that it's going to hurt badly. <laughs> I, I really honestly wasn't, though. Like, I, I raced uh, World Outlaw cars. I'd raced um, oh, a, a okay. bunch so of Oh, okay. So you stuff. had done some driving and stuff. I was very I used to, Yeah, I, I had a real extensive driving history. Like, my dad gave me my first little dirt bike. I had a 50cc Indian we, um, when I was a year and a half you old. You got to learn how to tell your story, man. I mean, <laughs> you started out with something about you were some college athlete with an eight pack and you went into modeling <laughs> and you left out the part that you're this freaking ace driver and motorcycle dude and been wrecked and growled and broken and everything else yeah well i mean, I mean my my dad uh literally my best friend in the whole world is my dad so everything i do is is trying to you know be half as cool as he is he's an old marine and a school teacher and just a spectacular that's human. freaking awesome i want to interview him <laughs> we'll talk about the young cord <laughs> yeah, yeah well it would be entertaining he'd probably just sit there and go i didn't know what what he was doing but um no, See, dad, my dad would just sit there and go, I, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> He's got Alzheimer's, so it, oh, it, it, it might be fun to <laughs> interview him one day. You know, it, you know, it, it, I'm not making fun of people with Alzheimer's, please, yeah. and, and families that have to deal with it. It's just you got to have 
some humor about it. When an yeah. Alzheimer guy kicks off or, or lady and they, they, they believe they're in the situation that they're in. So just have a little fun with it, you know, <laughs> just enjoy it with them. If they're under the table because the bombs are coming, get under the damn table with them. See, Dude, the bombs my, are coming. My grandma had it and she would freak out. And then all of a sudden she'd have this little moment of cognitive thought. And then she would look at you and she'd be like, I did it, didn't I? And we're like, Tony, yeah. is my pizza here? Okay, oh, cool. Pizza. We'll come over there in a minute. That's awesome. Yeah, babe. <laughs> Do you have $22.38 to your name? Or we could just run him out. Yeah, give me that What's fucking pizza. <laughs> <laughs> so, so anyway, my dad, when I was little, he had a big Corvette shop. So he was yeah. building everybody's cars. And uh, he had this little 50cc Indian. He welded training wheels to it. And it had a little black peanut tank on it with flames. That's the one and, right there. And I was, yeah, exactly. And I was uh, like, like that little orange one in the middle, yep. And he welded, he welded, uh, <laughs> that's freaking awesome. He welded uh, training wheels to it, painted it all black, put flames on it. And then he thought he would tie a rope to the back of it and hold on to me. That way I would be safe. So I'm in a diaper and um, because I'm a year and a half old or whatever I was. I was oh, you were bitty. four and you know it. No, I was. I, I swear <laughs> to God, I was a year and a half. Four and in I, a I diaper. Was, I was 11. I mean, I was a slow starter. A lot of hits to the head real young. So um, we got out there, though, and uh, dad's like, oh, it'll be fine. I'm going to hold on to him to my mom, my poor mother. And uh, I take off and I'm pulling my dad where he's taking like these 15 yard strides. And finally he was just like, fuck it. And let it go. He's going to be all right. And then I hauled ass down to the end of the street, came back and slid it up to the door. And dad's like, yeah, he'll be fine. Untied the rope, went back to working on the cars. And then I stayed in, in stuff that was motorized forever. Yeah, yeah, so. I love it. But uh, as we just said, the uh, the pizza's here. So I, I think we yeah. take a break, get some more beer, and uh, go eat some pizza. And our stack looks sad, so we got a lot of work Our stack today. does look sad. All right. <laughs> All right, well, the pizza was good. Back in the strap, son. And about beer. <laughs> God, I love hanging out with you. I know. I'm a pretty fun guy to hang out with if you like drinking. Yeah, well, God, I hope they sponsor you. Oh, we'll get to that in a little bit. But uh, <laughs> let's see, where do we leave, leave off? You were uh, a one and a half year old on a motorcycle with a rope tied around your waist on a, on a, on a, uh, with a diaper on. Yeah, yeah. And that was yesterday, which is weird. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> anyways, so now you're a stunt man and you're doing some stuff. But I, I would assume that now that you're uh, on older in life and doing bigger and better stunts, what's the what's the most heinous one you've ever done? Probably the my second world record is the fastest head-on collision on. Yeah, because you have a lot of world records. I have uh, quite a few of them. Yeah, like eight, ten, or a few more. Golly, <laughs> for for beating yourself up. Yeah, I, I did a TV show called Call to Greatness uh, for years and. Um, on that show, pretty much all we did was break world records. So we were constantly doing one after another. Look at that. And, there it is. Uh, oh, there it so is. So yeah, your top, second top world left. record is the most heinous thing you've done. Yeah, it was the fastest head-on collision on camera. I did 100 miles an hour into a five-ton military truck. Was it moving? Yeah, it was doing 100, and I was doing 100. So I realized the math sounds How do you weird, get that to go that fast in the military truck? We, it was three and a half months of those guys working on our vehicles to make those vehicles actually hit those speeds. Well, that the, was more of a headache than actually building roll cages and what's stuff. What's the point? Uh, well, the movie Dasavataram, which is an Indian film. I was Bollywood? In, yeah, I was doing right. a Bollywood movie. <laughs> it was my first one. I've done a bunch since then. But. <laughs> okay. So you got a hundred billion ton military truck and, yeah. and, and you... And I was driving a... Actually, if we look this up, it'd be kind of fun. Look was, it up. I was driving a flat nose Tata. T-A-T-A. -A. It's an Indian company that actually owns Range It'd be Rover. one word. Yeah, it's one word. Not Tata's. <laughs> Yeah, it's an Indian company that it, they make manufactured cars. So there's a car manufacturer down there, Tata Altros. It's an Indian company, but they have a delivery van. And okay. I was driving the delivery van. That's a it's a flat nosed little diesel thing, which by the way, trying to make that thing do more than six is a main huge pain in the ass. Well, how do you get enough people out of the way in India to be able to go 100 miles an hour? <laughs> So that was actually a real serious problem. We shot two and a half hours outside of Chennai in southern India to find an empty road. 
Then when everybody realized that we were filming out there that night, we had a helicopter, nine cameras, all this stuff. All of a sudden, because I had to start so far off set, the people that showed up to watch it got in the fucking middle of the road. <laughs> so I'm sitting way the hell back there. And, you know, everything over there is right side drive. I'm sitting there, you know, I'm all strapped in. I got my helmet, my Hans device and shit. And uh, I'm sitting inside this psycho cage that we had built. And uh, I'm looking up and I'm realizing that about a quarter mile in front of me, it's just a sea of people in the road. Okay. So I get on my radio and I'm like, guys, you got to clear the road. This is terrible. And nobody's doing it. And I, I'm like, holy crap. Well, fuck it. I'm going. And so I took off. And this, this is a prepped vehicle. So there's, you don't have a horn or windshield wipers, shit like that. I've got a Lexan windshield and this truck's all stripped out to bare guts. So I can't hit the horn. I'm just coming. And I thought, well, they're either going to move or they're not. And thank God they did. They started like parting like the Red Sea. And I got through that. We did the first test, <laughs> test run. And then they started yelling at me when I was coming back because they were so upset that I was, you know, running through the crowd of people. Wait a second when you were coming back. You crashed into a truck. Well, no, we did we did two test runs. Oh, okay, this is test runs. Yeah, because they had lights all set up because we were shooting at 1 o'clock in the morning. By the way, that's not the vehicle I crashed, but it is Tata, the company that I was driving the van of. But um, the... Uh, we just went from one millennial to another. I don't know if we made a <laughs> lateral move or a up. Or, it's kind of like pushing a rope. That's awesome. I love you guys. <laughs> so um, we 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 wound up lining that up a number of times because we had all the money for a helicopter and, and lots of cameras, but apparently we didn't have a lot of money for fucking lights. So where we had it lit was only like 150 yards. So we had to make these two trucks that are three quarters of a mile apart or a mile apart come together at 100 miles an hour in a hundred, you know, hundred and fifty foot, hundred and fifty yards, sorry, uh, lit area. It was super. Actually, it was really difficult to. Make those okay, I, I'm that. bored with. Uh, I'm bored with this story already. Right. Tell me about <laughs> what it felt like when you hit this damn thing. I mean, well, you're in a cage, you're bolted in, but there's still all the inertia, and I guess you got your hands tied down and everything. You're just going to hit it, and it's whatever happens, happens. But did your like guts fly out of your eyeballs? I or? tore the left ventricle in my heart, broke my leg in six places. Uh, the impact was hard enough that my heart bounced off my chest wall and tore the left ventricle. And um, my leg, the dash bar, which is the bar that runs underneath the steering yeah, column yeah, yeah. so it doesn't come down on you, that dash bar was ripped off because the truck actually tore the entire driver's side of my vehicle off. The five-ton truck did. And so when it So did, did you go with it? No, it, it, it shaved right next to me. I watched that thing go past me. And it was the craziest feeling in the world. All the the vacuum that happens and oh, I can only really imagine is wicked. And all the glass is like whoosh, all through my hair. A month and a half later, I was back in the states, and I was taking a shower with my freaking leg hanging out of the shower with that big brace still on it. And I was washing my hair and went ah, pulled glass out. A yeah. And a half later. It's yeah. Breaking. See these 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 uh, other people out there today, you know, claiming that they're tough. Oh, look at this! I, I jumped. Yeah. Come on, take a hundred mile an hour crash into another hundred mile an hour truck, and let's see what's going on. It was wicked. Now, you know, they that might be tough, but it's also stupid because it, <laughs> it's my second world record. And it was the most heinous. I went on to do other world records. They weren't so cool, right? You know, they're just kind of like all right. Yeah, so my, my first one was stupid. My first one was a lot of fun. We did the world's fastest couch. I oh, I've seen some people putting couches with motors and stuff. Yep. I did How it, fast did said couch go? I did 93 miles an hour in the world's fastest couch. And that was for Call to Greatness also. Um, Why if, do I not know about this show? Well, I don't, it, it only ran for a few years. A few, I think we did like uh, 60 episodes or something or 40 episodes. I don't where, know. Where are you? Is that it? No, that's a new one. I was looking last night actually for it because I was telling another buddy of mine about it. Oh, so see. this is back when they had analog television. This was, yeah, this was back in 05. Oh, okay. Back before we were cool. Couch racing. Yeah, they actually have like uh, groups of them that do this shit now, okay? Okay, that actually looks like something we should do. This this actually looks like something that not only should we do, we could rule the world of I, couch racing. I'm, I'm completely down for that. That is sad. 
I mean, I'm glad they're having fun, but that's team, way too slow. I see it. <laughs> team, team, I think that those are uh, because they're slow because they can't be powered. Oh, this is like soapbox derby on a couch? Yes, it's it's like uh, I did flu tog one time. It was pretty cool. What the hell is flu tog? That's the thing that uh, Red Bull does when they uh, you have to build a, a kite that holds a person, and you run off this giant uh, uh, cliff <laughs> to f see how far you can fly. There really aren't any rules in it uh, except for it can't be powered. It can't be uh, yeah. Here it is. Right here. That's a training video. Yeah, Dude. and uh, so uh, we built this really cool uh, float. And uh, our kite flight, something or another. And you put on a spectacle and you see how far you go, okay? And so this was pretty cool. We, we built this thing and, and there's better footage of it. But watch, Aaron goes straight freaking down. <laughs> okay, let me tell you why that didn't work. Because Aaron will never, ever listen to you, okay? okay. He, he, he has his own mind, and he's a smart guy, and he's pretty good at figuring out problems. But I saw when we were building it that he didn't have enough tilt for our, basically, hang glider to catch the air as he went down. I said, you're like this. He goes, no, we're going to have so much speed, it's going to grab and go. I said, no, you need to pull that angle up about, like, you know, yay so, you know, whatever that is, you know, 15, uh -huh. 18 degrees. And he's, you know, and then when you argue with him, he's going to do it anyways. Now he's just going to do it his way because that's the way it is. And I said, you're going straight in the water. <laughs> so the funny part about that is uh, that they have to recover because they do this all over the world. They have to recover the wrecked things that go on. And I mean, people go off in caterpillars and it's, it's just a spectacle. It's just like the couch thing. Just the dumber, the better. Right. <laughs> and uh, yeah. so our kite was so terrifically built and over-engineered. It just wasn't at the right angle that uh, it went nosedived in. And of course the wheel appara uh, apparatus that we built breaks away. So it goes over here and your kite part stays in the air as long as it can, right? Uh, ours took a nosedive and it was never seen again. They had the team out there. They had everybody out there to, you know, they don't want to pollute the lakes or whatever. Mm -mm. This thing's probably still going across that lake. It was so well built. <laughs> it's just like a hundred feet down. But uh, yeah, so it didn't work. So couch racing, we've just made a new team, everybody. It's uh, yep. the uh, couch monkey uh, racing team. <laughs> but we want to find the ones that Sounds are motorized. Really That's what we want to yeah, do. Yeah, we did, uh, I, I took a 1993 Chevy truck. I cut four inches out of the chassis, shortened that up. I put the steering column and pedals over the back of the rear axle. I, and again, my dad being the coolest dude on the planet, he took a couple weeks off school because he's a school teacher now and started helping me out and we built it in the shop together. The stunt guys that were supposed to be there helping us out um, wound up hooking up with some girls and not quite making it. So- uh, I like those guys. Yeah, those, <laughs> those dudes are awesome. I love them with all my heart. Uh, and I've worked with them many times, but that show was kind of funny because uh, they may have gotten a little bit lost between where they were coming from and where we were actually building I, I saw it's, it's pretty easy that your college campus and then you start on the numbered streets and you go to number seven and <laughs> I, same in every town right <laughs> yeah but that's for the girls see that's again that's missing the shop i think okay. that's the part where they got a little confused so, so how, they, you they, went 93 miles an hour 93 miles an hour and uh, we did it at el toro air base which was actually really cool because where we broke the world my first world record was done where my dad came home from Vietnam. So my dad That's landed cool. at El Toro in June of 69, and I did my first world record there. I was born in 69, dude. It's a good year. It is. It is great. Now, there is some footage, if uh, the millennials can find it, of uh, a guy driving a couch on a U.S. freeway. It's uh, <laughs> and, uh, We went through Taco Bell with ours. Yeah, okay. We well, got this, so much trouble. I've seen it a couple of times on the old <laughs> interwebs. And uh, it's just like driving a couch on a freeway, man. It's, uh, it's a video. Uh, couple driving a couch on wheels, I think, is what it is. I think it's that one. And uh, yeah, look at this. Oh, wow. <laughs> Dude, that's the UK. Look at the freaking tag on it. Look at that. <laughs> Tell me that's not rad. <laughs> I'm in. I'm in. We should I think build we that. Should start building that now. Yes. <laughs> I would want mine. I would want mine to be the easy chair. You know, the lazy boy that pops that's, up. But I'd want to be able to move it while I'm driving too. 
you know. So that is actually what I used for my seat. I took a big, huge leather Barca lounger. Barca lounger. And then I stuck a race seat up in it so I could still do my harness with a six point cage. And then I had two blue, weird leather love seats. And then I used a coffee table to hide the engine. So, as you guys and gals out there need to know, even when couch racing, you should have a six point harness and uh, <laughs> and safety equipment. Yeah, I, I, actually, that's one of the things that we're all, all those people were I've just done. free balling it out there, those man. Are, no they're cage. tougher than I am, though. Uh, they're, is, they're, is, it, is it is a dude and his old lady? <laughs> See, actually, I do want to bring that up because we did our fire burn last night. We did a small fire burn just to, for fun. That to fire kind of burn play. was a little disappointing. Yeah, I, well, here's the thing. I built it up way big. You did. And, you and we're going to push it. By the time people get to this part of the uh, <laughs> of the podcast, they're going to they're go, man, he built that fire burn up so big, and then it just was like... <laughs> <laughs> so I actually did want to say that. There is there is a difference between stuntmen and daredevils. And like Glenn used to teach me, he said, if you can't do it twice, don't do it once. Whereas a daredevil, he'll grin and pin. So he smiles great big and nails that throttle and just says, fuck it. And I've got some of my world records are from doing that, but my stunt life is not from doing that. Because when we're doing fire gags, we do have real big ones. We have big, scary, crazy ones that make everybody nervous. <laughs> but <laughs> I thought I, I thought I, I thought I heard him fart over there. I did there. too. <laughs> it was chair. Yeah, it was the chair. Uh, well, that's a different sound, but that's cool. okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> I was like, who the fuck? It's the first show and we got a freaking guy over here farting. So, uh, and, and why are farts so funny at any age? I mean, I'm a, I'm a 52 year old grown man and, and, and we're laughing about it. I'm stopping right now. No more fart laughing. <laughs> my, my wife gets so pissed off. I have a beautiful, amazing wife and she, in the morning, every morning, I'm like, Rap! she's like, seriously. Seriously, you can go in another room. You can be more polite about it. I'm like, yeah, but it's not funny. Honey, <laughs> when you said I do, you're, you're in. <laughs> you're that in. Is it. Yeah. This is the initiation fee every morning. That's to right. start your life with me. <laughs> oh, I know. So, super kick-ass. Okay, okay, so you got a lot of world records, uh, but you've tra also traveled the shit out of the world. I yeah. mean, you've been to... I don't know. You've told me places you've been, and I didn't even know there was. You could put that many consonants into one word and not have very many vowels. So um, I, I that's the alphabet if, for anybody who's listening. Uh, so <laughs> or valves, which yeah. is in a motor. Well, yeah. You so know, tell me where you've been. Uh, well, I, I've lived in India. I've lived in Thailand. Um, I was in Colombia doing a movie for five months, and then stayed a little bit longer. Uh, or a TV show, the TV show Jack Ryan. And, oh yeah. Uh, I had a blast doing that. That that was a riot, dude. And Colombia is amazing. I've heard that. I've heard that it's a great party town. It's a lot of fun. Good food. Oh, the food's incredible. The people are amazing. And you know they do have kind of a bad rap in Colombia for you know some certain reasons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I mean, it's like but anywhere way in the world. Beyond that, you it, get past it, it. It's amazing. I and, mean, I've I, I've had a big big following in Colombia, believe it or not. And uh, a lot of people follow us down there. And they're like, you know, I get emails all the time. You know, come down to Colombia. We'll take care of you. Come to Bogota. We'll hang out. Well, you we know. did the motorcycle tours down there on our days off, and we would go rent some BMW bikes and then just go rage all over the place and take nine and 10 hour road trips on these motorcycles. It was amazing. The place is beautiful. Yeah. Everybody in America thinks, you know, Oh my God, Columbia, there's going to be people with guns and little trees growing. <laughs> we can't go there. <laughs> you know, something that's funny is a lot of my American friends that don't travel a lot, it, it, they have a ton of preconceived notions about the rest of the world. And I remember when I was very first going to India and then when I moved to Dubai and I lived in Dubai for four and a half years, my family, certain parts of my family, they were worried I was going to have my head cut off and all this bad stuff was going to happen. But the reality is everywhere is the same, man. Everybody just wants to take care of their families and yeah. and have a good life and just, you know. There's bad elements in can. everywhere. Absolutely. You know, I can I can take you right down the street here about 200 yards away. It's a horrible freaking neighborhood, <laughs> but it's still America, okay, yeah. right? And, and uh, we're building businesses, you know, right here, 200 yards away. So uh, I agree with you. I've been to Dubai, but, uh, you know, I've always wanted to go to like Bali and Indonesia and Bali's you gorgeous. Know, uh, yeah. Taiwan and Taipei's and Thai whatever, anything Thai, I want to go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Thailand's amazing. I, I was all over Thailand. One of my best friends, he's actually the reason I started traveling a lot, Andy. Um, he's the one I got Hold most on one second, man. With. It's my yeah. lawyer calling. I got to see what's going on. Yo,
Oh, okay. You ready? Yeah. All right, millennials. So, uh, so uh, we are not doing very good. Somebody's not doing very good at all on drinking beer. Why does this one have? It was him. He doesn't get to drink beer. He's working. All right, fine. What are you trying to do over there? I don't know. World's toughest fucking stunt, man. 87 million world records in stunts, and you can't finish a freaking measly pissy at fucking light beer? I'm fragile. <laughs> All right. So let's get back to talking about, or is it, was it just that it was warm? It, it, it had gotten a little bit warm, but mainly I'd put it down because we were going to go have pizza. We did go have pizza. And then when we came back, I didn't want to drink that one anymore because it was hot. But now I'm going to drink it. Okay. I'll or, make the point. You know what we call a, hot, a, a kind of a lukewarm beer here in Texas? It's called rodeo beer. Because that's the shit that's laying around in the back of your truck after you got through rodeoing. <laughs> you know? So, awesome. you know, and sometimes rodeo beer is the best beer you ever had in your life. Because, you know, I do a different kind of rodeo than some of them cowboys. <laughs> <laughs> out there rounding up them girls. Donuts count. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, you meant the girls. Yeah, yeah. So here you go. Cars Check are it out. cheaper. So I want to see, like, uh, something you've done. Show us something. All right. What what you, you, you type my name into Google? Give me the play by play. You can also type it in on Grinder, but uh, that's how we met. Yes, <laughs> it said he is nine steps away. I was away. swiping whatever way was wrong. <laughs> You're right. I don't even know. I've never. You know, that's the one thing. Hold on, hold on. I got a thought. This is the one thing that I really think that I missed out on is this ease of dating chicks you know on uh oh yeah on, it's like fish it? in a barrel where it's like fit right and right and yeah. left it, i know it's like fish in a barrel because i've had a camera crew and and sound crew and everything with me forever <laughs> uh, names of which i will withhold that always are like they get to the town and they're over there like sink 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 they're doing all this stuff and i'm like what are you doing and they just got a big old smile on their face and they leave and they come back with a big old smile on their face mm -hmm. and and they say the same thing it's like shooting fish in a barrel exactly right <laughs> <laughs> millennials got it on right here so Actually, and, 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 and I was not only was I married throughout all those times and so I couldn't do it. But, you know, then in the when I got a divorce before I got remarried again, it, I didn't understand it. So I just was like, that's stupid. So I tried it about a year and a half ago. And by it, I tried it. I mean, my buddy Ryan thought he was being funny and him and his son GQ. Uh, I was asleep at their house. They absconded with my phone and they uh, put me on every single app known to mankind that, that had to do with dating so i had all of them and they put the height limit at four foot five or four foot six <laughs> and, and then they they asked for like you know extra loving and all that stuff yeah, so yeah, they yeah. wanted big girls that were not um tall <laughs> so, okay so i like to drain your circle and let's go <laughs> so so all of a sudden the next morning i wake up and my phone is like ding, ding, ding. I'm checking my messages. And then all of a sudden, I'm checking these emails because he tied it to my personal email account. I love so, these guys. So I've got all of these messages. And I started going through. I'm like, what in the freaking hell is going on? And you then were getting, getting some good pics, though, I'm weren't you? I'm getting photos of, of things um, you can't even talk about. Yeah. And, and it's stuff that, you know, I'm sure there's somebody out there that is excited about that well it's like I it's wasn't. like car sales there's a, there's a, there's an ass for every seat there is yeah but you know i started talking about it back when i was single um you know and i was thinking about <laughs> playing with this thing right and and after talking to the guys that that uh, were, were traveling with me and going to different towns uh i was like you know that takes all the sport out of it. I would rather go to the bar, yeah. try to buy some drinks for a good looking lady or two or even three and strike out and go home and beat off rather than just be able to go, oh, ding, I'm getting laid. You know, she, oh, and she's bringing pizza. I love this. You know, that, there's no sport in that. There is no sport in that. And, and honestly, I mean, I, I mean, hey, everybody gets to do the things they love to do. I don't really care. Each their own kind of thing. But how do you even know if the person's the person? Like, I did... I thought it was funny. I changed the settings on one of the apps yeah. that I'll leave nameless. And, uh, oh, yeah, I'll take another one of those. Oh, I know. I got you. Oh, yeah. Thank you, dear. And um, so I thought, fuck it. I'm going to run with it. it he, he's already signed me up for this shit. He signed me for, like, the premier membership on all of them. So I had, like, 
$15 and $40 charges all over my freaking account, and Dickhead had gotten my wallet, so I paid for all of these. I mean, I love this guy. Yeah, I want to have Ryan, him on. <laughs> Ryan's <laughs> awesome. He's also the guy we were at a bar a couple years ago, and I was like, dude, my buddy and I were hanging out. He's like, man, I'd love to have some hot chocolate. And Ryan goes, you want hot chocolate? And then he left and came back, and he made the people at the bar make us hot chocolate. So the guy's a trip. Like, okay. he's super cool, but... I think you digressed a little bit there. Yeah, but get I did. back to the, the so chicks, and to, you tried it out. Yeah, so I tried it out. The first date I went on... Was a man. This girl... <laughs> dude, <laughs> it was insane. It wound up being, like, four days long because it, there was a hurricane that was hitting, and we had a problem in florida where when i went to pick her up the hurricane it's had usually where made, hurricanes go yeah it's like and, their home <laughs> and it hadn't made landfall yet well i went to pick her up we went to dinner or I went to lunch we're sitting there talking and she's like oh where i'm at there's nobody around i'm not from here i'm from the dc area and she's telling me all these stories and f the first thing i noticed was her profile said that she was 30 and I'm sure at some point she had been 30, <laughs> but oh, it was not in ouch. the recent past. So, <laughs> so, so we're sitting there, and the only thing that's going through my head is, it said you were 30. Okay. And, and I'm, she's all of, and I'm being polite, she's all of maybe 60. Okay, I get it. And, uh, you know, not a terrible looking lady, nice lady, whatever, but there was definitely something a little bit strange. Like she was a little on the unhinged side. And so I didn't really know what to do. Are think we doing crying it. game here? Oh, dude, it got weird. <laughs> so it got weird. Well, my parents, we've got a boat, uh, we have a sailboat in uh, St. Augustine. So we're in Tampa on this date, and I'm telling her, well, I got to go help my dad tie the boat off because the hurricane's about to hit, so I've got to go. And she's like, starts getting a little emotional, and she starts telling me how she's really afraid to be alone, and this hurricane's scaring her. And okay, whatever. She's not 30. She's, you know, 65. <laughs> but but, but I don't want to but I don't want to be mean and uh, I, I have such a hard time being not polite to people. So I was like, it's fine. I said, if you want, you're more than welcome to come with us. Uh, you know, we're going to go tie this boat off and we'll be with the family and whatever. And you can hang out till the hurricane passes and then I'll take you home. And she's like, oh, God, thank you so much. And she was really sweet about it. So we, we leave Tampa, drive to St. Augustine. She's totally cool the whole time. And there's no chemistry. <laughs> Zero. Okay, there's no, now, there's let me no reset this for you guys out there watching <laughs> or listening or whatever you're doing. You're single. You're a stunt man. Yeah. You fucking hit it. You know you did. <laughs> there's no chemistry at okay, all. Okay, no chemistry. So we get to St. Augustine. And my dad comes, because our boat's out on mooring. My dad comes to pick us up, and my dad's looking at me, because <laughs> let's just say this is not a typical situation <laughs> for me to bring a girl over. He and thought you were bringing him for her. Certainly for not. Him or for, certainly. <laughs> can't even say it. You were bringing her for him. <laughs> certainly not in, in my mom and dad's age category. So um, anyway, uh, we get on the boat. We're sitting there talking. Everything's cool. We have a nice night. Everybody's nice. She goes to her cabin and goes to sleep. I slept on, in the SETI area in the galley. And then the next morning, we head back. And I'm like, okay, well, you know, hurricane made landfall. It passed last night mostly. Today, it's gone. I'll take you home. And she's like, oh, my God, I left my keys. Let me try to get a hold of the guy that I'm... Uh, supposed to be staying at his place. Maybe he can drop off a key. You so had a homeless in. woman? Dude. Literally? Couch so surfer? Four days go by with this lady not being able to get a hold of the person to let her into the home she's supposed to be in. And then all of a sudden, the weird shit starts happening, as if that wasn't weird. She starts telling me that she's in the CIA. Then she starts telling me that um, she has hit operatives. And I'm like, what do you mean you've hit operatives? So she starts talking about these people that she's acquired these targets. And I'm like, what the frick? So finally, the morning of the fourth day, I look at my little sister and I'm like, She's in on this? My little sister was at the house. Oh, okay. And, and, I didn't uh, know if this was and no, you know, God, Newman no. tag team no, or something. No, no, no. So I, I look at my little sister. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, hey, 
I got to take this lady back to Tampa. It's a two hour, two and a half hour ride. I'm like, I, there's no way I'm doing this alone. I was like, I go, can you please just ride in the vehicle? This chick scares the crap out of me. I mean, guy to guy, I'm all right. I have no problem. But this lady was frightening because she kept having these rando phone calls and she would start talking to people and she's like, yes, Target's acquired. Target's acquired. Yes, I've been, I've been debriefed on a situation. I That's absolutely. my one and only time of ever doing that stupid app shit because after that... Okay, I, I got... Like, I gotta fucking. Hell no! I gotta bro. tell you, and I will that, tell you. I, actually, a really bad part, really bad. I'm oh, so I love sorry. This. When I dropped her off, she calls me, and I'm already ten minutes away. Like I left out of there, freaking leaving elevens, dude. I was gone, and my sister's cracking up. And then my sister looks down and goes, "Oh shit, her purse is in the truck." And I was like, fuck it. Her purse is gone. <laughs> we, <laughs> we, we, we just <laughs> chunked it out the window. window. And then she's calling me. I'm blocking her number. I'm like, no, no, dude. I'm telling you, that whole time. Was, I would have had to go through the purse. It was so, nah, fuck no. I don't know what I don't, Hey, maybe she was. She, I, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that was frightening that, that is was super frightening this is way better than your stunt story a yeah, few minutes ago that's the <laughs> shit right there but that's and why. tampa let me tell you tampa sarasota i mean god bless them i love that area i love the weather but there are some strange <laughs> are. people down there just in general yeah. the people are strange and different and that's just my family <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> no i'm just telling you it's it's a different kind of world down there they, oh, they, bro, it's like that, the land that time <laughs> forgot after oh yeah absolutely especially because everybody retires down there you know, Tampa, Fort Lauderdale. No, they Lauderdale. retire. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They come you're from right. the New Yorks and they retire. That's right. Now, yeah. see, you're actually lucky you weren't New in New York and you were in Florida because if you were in New York, she would have already just been your your housemate. You'd have never gotten her to leave. I mean, people do this in New York. I read a story the other day. California, too. Yeah. They, they just move in, you know, like a, like a Craigslist ad. I need a roommate. And then they just never leave. Yep. And, you know, if they receive one piece of, I, I'm probably screwing this up, but if they receive one piece of of mail then you don't have the They're right resident. to kick them out <laughs> yeah i learned that i learned that uh i learned that shit here because you know we, you know west fast allowed group uh, and you know gas monkey gets in visitors and visitors and we get our few fair shares of uh, some loony people and uh <laughs> there was one of the guys from the homeless encampment that came down and he was being you know making an ass out of himself and it was going to be a problem and he was scaring away the customers and stuff like so us, i went out there an and hour. i said i said look you gotta go i said you know you just have to leave he wouldn't leave and everything else so finally i had to call the cops you know because naturally in texas <laughs> if i wasn't the guy on tv we just go out there and and and, and beat him up or, or throw him in a ditch not really we're, we're gonna definitely edit that shit and uh <laughs> Not really. Can't, can't be talking about beating up homeless people. What's wrong with you, Cord? I mean, I why would know. you say something I, like I that? I just slipped into it. I'm sorry. So anyways, no. So I, I called the cops because I got to do it the right way because I'm the guy on TV. And the cop tells me, he goes, you know what? He goes, you're, uh, you're real lucky that you didn't make them leave. I said, what do you mean? He goes, well, he goes, there's some crazy deal that if you force somebody off of your property... You're responsible for him for 24 hours. So what? if you force him off your property, I said, so if I force him off my property, he's staying in the road and gets run over. He goes, yeah, it's your fault. He goes, you, didn't, you, you forced him off. And I'm like, well, what happened to Castle Law? He goes, well, was he trying to kill you? And I'm like, I don't Maybe. know. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, now you're probably going to have to cut a lot of shit and get back to this and fish in some of the information. But what are, what are you going to look at here? Because I want to see, oh, I want yeah. you to play like uh, the, the, the sports uh, caster on what's <laughs> happening. So... Um, what is this? This is a little demo reel. That was the that weakest ass knew. looking friggin. <laughs> Look, that's what we did last night. Yeah, so that was for the opening of Fast Six in Dubai. And uh, we did a big grand, uh, whatever, red carpet thing for that. That was doubling Kamal Hassan in India. That's actually a 40 mile an hour car hit there. They just slow it down. Um, I'm not going to say anything bad about the editors that we worked with, but I didn't really think they were great. Well, this might have been in the 80s. Oh, this was all in 2000-something. Was that you? Yeah, that was me and what Stephen happened? Baldwin. Me and Stephen Baldwin. And there's my fat ass getting beat up in a movie. Dude, was, you were a decent-looking guy there. What happened in such movie, a few years? <laughs> that movie's called Loving the Bad Man. My buddy Kevin hit on me. There's, uh, that's Michael Bean, the guy that played Johnny Ringo in uh, Tombstone and me and there's Val Kilmer and then Curtis Jackson 50 what? Cent in there. you were with 
Yeah, and the Val Kilmer from Top Gear. Yeah, and Top Gun, yeah. And then like that's Top uh, Gun. And then that's me. Nobody doing... mentions Top Gear. Erase that. <laughs> Fucking that's, stupid that show. That was a 19 foot fall to concrete. That's a 60 mile an hour cannon roll. Uh, 55 mile an hour cannon roll. That's a air ram into a door on Walking Tall. There's Look at this. Semi truck. We full rolled. of mag wheels. Yeah, they wanted to have 1,500 wheels flying out of it. I don't. Were know. they real? Yeah, yeah, they were legit. And so if you got knocked with one of those, it would hurt. <laughs> So there's me and Kevin Sorbo about to fight. I That's like Hercules. Sorbo. Kevin's awesome, dude. That guy is incredible. I took a real pull cue to the... Oh, there's the Mary clip. Yeah. That was my... And then this is the movie Sex Drive. Um, Which you obviously have a lot of. You already knocked up your new wife. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this is a 65 mile an hour ratchet off of a motorcycle on fire in Thailand. Now this... And then this is a riot. This here... My you buddy, did that. Yeah, You're riding my buddy, that. My buddy, Mr. Wheelie, we, he, he actually passed away, but he's in the front bike. That's me on the black bike. Um, and then we rode across the roof of the train and then off the end. And everything that Bollywood does, they love to do the slow motion stuff, so it makes it look very fake. But we did that. That was cool. And that's uh, another, you know, 55, 60 mile an hour cannon roll. That one, I actually got stuck in the car. That's the 100 mile an hour head on collision. Again, Bollywood loving that. God, can you get that in real time? That's 15 stories to the ground that it just showed. Um, and I'm doubling Kamal. They had me in dark hair. And uh, and then that's me doubling Kamal uh, with David Buglione. Uh David doubled him also. Jupe Katana doubled him also. Uh, that's at Charlie Sheen's house. <laughs> Was this before or after Tiger's Blood? This is after. Charlie's awesome, dude. I'm a huge... I want him on my show. Charlie's badass, man. He's a friend of mine. I want to party with him, too, even though he supposedly doesn't party anymore. Yeah. You are more than... I, I will absolutely make a phone call. That'd be rad. You may have to come to L.A., though, because he does... Like Charlie says, he's like, I got my hip stuff, so he's got to do his hip thing every day. Oh, I'm down. I'll go and party. That was 50 on the on gravel and asphalt, the rat, the uh, motorcycle crash. I actually built that, six, my dad and I actually built that 68 uh, Camaro. That's got an LS with a six speed in it. And then that is for a music video called Stuntman. <laughs> There's still beer at the top of that. Is there a problem that I don't know about? Are you, are you sympathy not drinking because your uh, newly uh, acquired wife is now pregnant? She's no. not here. She's in the other room. Oh, no. I sent her shopping. <laughs> With my credit card or yours? Well, yeah. Your credit card. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't know how to get it. But uh, anyways, that's a fucking unbelievable. I mean, like when you were single, did you just like meet chicks and like, hey, what do you do? And you just like, hey, you're watching this video for a few minutes. I'm going to go get us some drinks. Uh, I had actually, my, my buddy used to be really bad about that. He would... We'd be we'd be in a bar somewhere, especially when I was living in Dubai right after I got divorced. My buddy would lean up against the thing and he'd start talking to some girl and he'd be like, My boy's in movies. Oh yeah. And then the girl would be like, Okay. And he goes, Look at this shit. And he'd show him something on the phone and then they would want to talk and whatever. <laughs> well, that's like your, your your boy yesterday, and I love him. He was a very good safety guy and and, uh, and fire guy and everything else that when we lit you on fire. But uh, I got to tell you, when I laughed at him a little bit for being on Power Ranger, the first Red Ranger, he got a little offended. I was like, he's like, oh, yeah? Well, there's 100 languages in 40 countries. And I'm like, he got me beat on the, the languages, but the countries I got you on. <laughs> so Yeah, Austin's amazing. Don't dude. make me put on a yellow suit, dude. <laughs> well, you'd be the wrong one then. I don't know. It was red. Well, no, I'd be yellow and it'd be red. I mean, I think it'd be cool if the Power Rangers like all of a sudden Wouldn't had to attack themselves. Orange? I don't know. Be like a melted crayon. I mean, if they had to, if they had to <laughs> melt, if they had to fight each other for supremacy. <laughs> what? Oh, oh yeah. Well, yeah. that's a problem. I couldn't be the yellow one then. Uh, that would be a problem. Just gonna tuck and tape. I saw it on uh, uh, whatever that was. It gets the. It, it, Hose or, ho or lotion or whatever. Silence of the Lambs. Yeah, he tucked and taped all right. Freaking awesome. Puts the lotion on his skin. So, the hose all right, let's go into a little rapid fire. All right, rapid fire. 
I'm making this up as I go because I don't really have a platform <sighs> recipe yet. Why are you being so slow? Do I need to break up? Did somebody say shots? All right, fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, okay. only if we get to use your tequila. Because I'm completely out of my tequila. It did so well that it's gone. There's one in the freezer. I saw it. Oh, well. I might be secretly filling it up with somebody else. It's just so I can say I have tequila some more. But uh, no, there was a, there was a small glitch in the uh, matrix there on uh, the tequila. So I'm uh, re uh, building that business and we'll be launching it again soon. Shameless so. plug. Please wait at your local liquor store. Start now. It's going to be a while though. Wait, no, now. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So here we go. We're going to trade Burt Reynolds stories because mm -hmm. I heard you got to work with old Burt or at least be there. How, what was the deal? So my friend, again, Glenn Wilder, uh, Glenn is who helped to start Bert's career. That's empty. Don't you worry a little hard about it. <laughs> so, and why are they all on your side? It's like you've done all the work. Well, I, I actually some have. some of that work. I don't think we're even. I think I'm like two ahead. You know what? I know these are mine. Okay, so we're even then. Now, we're going to leave a little divide right there. There's I no just want everybody at home. Hey, I don't need any Discord cord. All right. <laughs> so Burt Reynolds story. Tell Burt me Reynolds what's story. up. All right. So Glenn calls me. This was years ago before I left for Dubai. So like 2011 or 12. And he goes, Hey buddy, what are you doing? Where are you at? Whatever. How's things going? I said, oh, I just rolled back into Florida. Uh, I'd love to see you. And he said, Well, I'm headed to Burt's house. Do you want to come? That's like, there in Jupiter. And I, yeah, it's in Jupiter. And I was like, Yeah, I would love to. And he goes, okay, great. So I met up with him. Glenn lived in Orlando at the time. And, uh, wow, all the beer. I'm just keeping burping. That's always good. It's very masculine. Are you guys going to that? You drink four beers so far. Four. <laughs> <laughs> but four beers, and you're so, complaining. Well, I've done nothing but drive since I got married. I've not been on my Obviously, party she's world. pregnant. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> driven so uh anyway glenn tells me come meet him so i go meet him at his house in orlando we drove over to burt's and glenn had known for years that one of the things i wanted to do was be able to hang out with burt and watch either Smokey and the bandit or hooper or one of those very cool and uh so we did both we sat at his place in jupiter we watched Smokey and the bandit and we watched Hooper Did together. you sit in his movie room where it's we, got the old phone where he used to watch his screens and he, and he has sure all the did. buttons? It's like all 1970s technology. It is the coolest thing that it I have ever got to awesome. do in my entire life. And I was so excited. Man, that yeah. is super cool. You know, I, I got to film with him for the show. We built a, a Trans Am and, and we went to his house. And uh, so we, we filmed with him twice, actually. Uh, once in the beginning and once after. And uh, it was amazing you know so if you'd have told me as a kid loving those movies just worshiping hooper and mm -hmm. and uh, stroker ace and smoking the bandit and everything else you know that i was going to get to work with burt reynolds one day Dude, i was just so cool. like no way right and uh, so in the show we kind of just recreated the run we had to get down we had to get a a, a truckload of miller light and the trans am down wait did you guys actually do the texarkana run oh you didn't see this Where's the, the, pull up the actual uh, little snippet of when we recreated the run. Oh, that the, 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 is the run. be the coolest thing on the planet. So yeah, Aaron drove the big truck and uh, I drove the Trans Am with, uh, with Christy. Uh, Aaron does not look a lot like um, no, Jerry no. Reed. So did, it, the did, he, did he so sing at all? There's a, <laughs> there's a scene. Holy uh, it's crap. a little long. We can't watch it right now. But right. Uh, basically, uh, it's it's uh, it's a tribute to uh, Smoking the Bandit and to Burt Reynolds himself. And uh, so we recreated the big rig. We had that with us. We had the the actual Trans Am that we built, and we took off from here to uh, New Orleans to where my buyer was that was buying the Trans Am because he wanted to have a party and he wanted to he wanted me to bring him a, a truckload of Miller Lite, right? <laughs> So, uh, really play that. Yeah, that's, that's pretty good. Uh, and, uh, dude, that is insane. Look at that. Holy so there we are right there with Bert. Pause that. I mean, if you had told me that that was going to happen and there's a hat right back here in my Bert uh, Memorial wall. Oh, uh, I know. I got pictures of it. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> a lot of people don't know this in the show. 
because we didn't film this part uh, for the show. It was after the cameras yeah. were getting packed up. Burt came, went in the house. He comes back out and he's holding his hat with all the feathers on it and everything. And I think it was from like Burt Reynolds uh, or Smokey the Bandit 2. And he's like, I never knew who I was going to give this to. And I go, okay. And he hands it to me. I said, sir, I, I, I mean, I'm getting goosebumps again right now. He goes, he goes, I said, I can't take this. He goes, I said, this is a big deal. And he goes, I said, oh, you'll take it and you will. And he goes, I said, all right, you know, I mean, so Burt Reynolds gave me his hat, I and mean, that's cool. That's insane. Man. It's that's really, so really wild. Cool. You know what's funny is, so Glenn, not funny, sad, but um, Glenn actually passed away in 2017. Mm. Burt passed away in 2018. There it is. Holy crap. Yeah, that's Jupiter. <laughs> yeah, that's wow. at his pad, and I got the hat. He had just given it to me. Wow. Dude, that is so freaking cool. I've had a lot of people try to get that hat. They're yeah, not getting there it. is no way I would ever let that go. Uh, there's no that's, way. Yeah. yeah I no, mean, I think Bert's ghost would come back and kick my ass. Yeah. And and then And he was of, intimidating even follow. there. You know, being being even older and, and a little frail and moving a little slow, it's like you you don't want to piss this dude off. Well, see, I I I only met Bert a few times. I met him when Glenn took me over to watch the shows and then I went and watched uh, they came out to the the Chinese Man Theater and one of the theaters right there on Sunset. And Bert was doing Hooper and Smokey and the Bandit, and I took some friends of mine, and my and uh, we went and watched it, and then afterwards went and hung out with Bert a little bit. But that was right towards the very end of his life. Yeah. And then when my friend uh, passed away, when Glenn passed away, Bert was at his funeral, and um, I set two people away from him, and uh, at the end of it, we shook hands, and I said, you know, it was such an honor to get to meet you with Glenn, and it's really cool to get to see you here. Yeah. Because there was only 30 of us in the family thing for Glenn. That's way cool. And he, you talk about a presence. There's only a few people I've ever met in my whole life. Like yeah. I, I worked with Al Pacino when we did uh, Any Given Sunday together. And that guy Cameron Diaz in. was in there, right? Cameron, yeah, Cameron was. There we go. And she remembered me, which was super cool. I hope she remembers me now. But, um, I, no, probably not. But because we'd done something about Mary together and she was really cool on Mary. And then when we did uh, Any Given Sunday, she was like, Cordy, what's up? And she was really sweet and kind. And um, I haven't seen her since, though, so God knows. Do you have her number? But, uh, you know, if I did, I probably still wouldn't give it to you because my wife and your wife would kill me. Hey, don't throw me under your own bus. I'm just saying. Dang, dude. So, <laughs> anyway, um, so we were doing Any Given Sunday, the... At the one end, I was standing here with Jamie Foxx and them were playing catch and stuff. And uh, Al Pacino walked in the room. And when he walked in, it, dude, it's pro player stadium. It's massive. But you knew the guy walked in the room. Yeah. And Burt Reynolds was the same way. Yeah, for sure. It, it was like this presence that you just, the guy was insane. Like a phenomenal being. Yeah, he was, he was super cool. God rest uh, Burt Reynolds. May Burt Reynolds live forever. Yeah. Didn't we do the whole... Yeah, that's what yeah, you're supposed to. Yeah, I'm still developing this. Yeah, I mean, but you have to do something reverent. Yeah, actually, you know, he did that little hat tip. Yeah, he, he only does the... one thing without his hat. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I'd wear that. If I, I'm taking that hat home tonight. I started, I started, I started to say, well, <laughs> all right. So, God dang, dude, you have had an amazing career. Traveled the whole entire world. Spent life living in other countries. I feel like such a loser. Oh, come on. I mean... Dude, you're like the coolest guy on the planet when it comes to the car I, show. I'm not, I'm not fishing for compliments, man. No, I'm just I know, saying but... you've just gotten to do so much stuff and I've been stuck here working for cable. <laughs> this is such a pain. Well, the here's ass. the thing. I would love for us to go start doing stuff. Like, my buddies in Dubai, I was telling them about doing this show and I was sending messages out last night. I'm like, guys... I did this little burn for him in front of the shop, whatever. We're going to hang out and do this podcast today. And my buddy, Sultan, said that if we want to come over, he's got a 1,500-horse Hummer. Uh, he's also got the world's most beautiful mega yacht from 2016. He's like, if you guys want to come to Dubai, let me know. I'll hook it all up. And we go on the yacht and hang we out? We can go do anything you want. And he's like a, a we can a, go like do a, Doom like Bash. A super rich dude or something? Yeah. He's, he's, uh, his brother is the head of immigration for the whole UAE. Can I get a, a passport or something, or a little ID or well, you honorary have member? Your own passport, but well, I don't know. I mean, you know I'm what? Just... Actually, I don't have my. If I have my thing on me, I have my. Oh, I do actually. I have my residence card. You just happen to have a residence card for Dubai. Yeah, because I. There you, you go. carry a wallet. Look at that. I have a residence card. <laughs> what 
in the hell is wrong with you in this picture? I have very long hair. And you know, a great like beard. Like before you but cut it's it. Brown hair. Yeah, well, that's because it's been going white really fast. Oh yeah. <laughs> So I went to Dubai once and it was pretty rad. Put that up and put your wallet up. That wallet's embarrassing. People that carry a wallet like that is just no good. That's a good wallet. That'll break your back right there. This? That's just too much shit. All the stuff if I, I had need. to carry that much crap around. I need this stuff. No. I need this. No, let me show you what you need, son. What do I need? Bam. Good, cold, hard American cat. Let me see. No, I... I <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all I'll you need it. in your pocket. Yeah, well... It's, it's just, some, just some Hondas, a hope, and a dream. <laughs> it's all you need. <laughs> yeah. So, anyways, a lot of people don't know that we we barely know each other. Even though right. we're friends, we become fast friends because you know we like cars and motorcycles and flames and crazy girls. fucking stupid stuff and girls and beer and what have you. So we were introduced by uh, a friend of yours and a friend of mine that that I just haven't uh, been around Tim. in forever. Tim Miller. And uh, he calls up and says, I got this friend coming in town. You got to meet him. It's going to be crazy. We're doing these crazy things. And, you know, that's a story for another time. But next thing you know, it's like we're supposed to be a quick lunch meeting. Well, they got ugly that night. Yeah. Um, well, we got into these and then we got into the uh, The tequila. gas monkey tequila. Yeah. That stuff will start a party. <clears throat> yeah. It started a party. All right. And I cut your hair with a grinder. With, with a four inch angle grinder. Yeah. Check so this out. Play that. Look at my face. I'm like, you're oh, like, shit. I have already decided that this is going to happen. <laughs> you do realize, like my dad loved to point out on this, that uh, if that caught my hair, that would be through my skull before we would have any chance to do anything. No, it would have <laughs> ripped out of my hand and flown across the room. I mean, there's more to that video, oh, but... That that we, was such we're just an sitting there drinking, night. and I was like, "Let's do some crazy stunt, man." You were like, "Well, I don't have my fire stuff, or I'd light myself on fire." And uh, I said, "Well, your freaking hairdo sucks, man." You were like, "You can cut my hair. That's no big deal." I was like, "Here, use this. I bet you a dollar you won't do it." Threw the fucking dollar on the table. Well, yeah. See, the video's longer. See, I look at your hair there, dude. Oh yeah. Look at you, uh, pimp daddy. Yeah. Well, I'm full Bob Ross at that moment. Uh, exactly. <laughs> look at that shirt, man. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Uh, if actually, anybody out there wonders why he and I didn't become instant friends, look at that hairdo in that shirt. I mean, really. Oh, my goodness. So we don't have to watch the whole thing. I think I started oh, with dude. some scissors first and then some tin snips. Yeah. And I started with tin snips, and that actually, wasn't working. The part that I knew I was going to be in trouble in the most ridiculous way was when I started being saran wrapped. Oh, yeah. Well, I didn't want you to move and get hurt. You know, I well, wanted you, you know, to be safety third. Exactly. <laughs> I like I to mean, keep it in the top five. <laughs> I mean, it, it's safety, man. You know, yeah, you know, important. it's you know, it's safe in, in my world always was the condom in my wallet because I wasn't ever pulling that out. <laughs> <laughs> it's the safest condom on the planet. I can bet money on it. Same one I carried for 32 years. You know, like, you know? <laughs> and the expiration date, 1979. They expire? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know either. The part that bugs me, do you know they say tested? Who the fuck is testing a condom? That's they say it on the wrapper? They say Have you ever seen the serial <laughs> numbers on them at the end? Wait, they have serial numbers? Oh, you didn't have to unroll it that far. Oh, yeah, no. it's all the way down at the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the sad part is I've fallen for that joke before. Yes. I tried. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like you fell for it just to get the joke out there. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> Okay. Nice of you to so, be nice. So we get completely hammered on this trip, and mm. and I'd only met you like at twelve that day. We went to a business lunch together, and then whammo! Yeah. Before I cut your hair, though, we yeah. ripped out the trike. Okay, so and I told you I had a badass trike, and this yeah. thing uh, was it. Corey LaJoy that built this for me. Yes. Corey LaJoy, the NASCAR <laughs> driver, built this for me, and you're like, I can drive anything. I can drive it. <laughs> Here we go. And we're like three sheets to the wind. Oh, yeah. I'm already way too drunk to fucking fish. It's really oh, yeah. shitty video quality, guys. I hope it's better. No, that's probably one of our cell phones. Yeah. Look at that. Now, now's when you oh, really I think got you it. got it going, right? I'm good. Now you're like, I got this drift thing down, Don't man. Don't you worry. This that, truck ain't going to do I'm nothing I'm going to make sure me. that building is right where it's supposed to be. <laughs> Because I'm pretty sure I hit the building later. Yeah, I think you did. Do we do we see him wrecking this video? 
I think it's the other video, but yeah, because my stupid ass spawns up doing that for the while. Here's the thing. If it's motorized and I get to make smoke or slide it, yeah, here comes. And a little too deep. Bam. <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> you broke it. It's still sitting over there broken. We haven't even fixed it yet. You know, it's it, it's so cool. But, I mean, I'm telling you. I just backed into that at like 30 miles an hour, and I'm still cracking up laughing. I know, right? Point that out. <laughs> this is the stupidity, which is the male. You know, and, it, you know, it, you could have gotten really bad hurt, but we didn't care. But I got to tell you, go back to where we can see, him, like, his whole, like, just style there. It's so rad. I'm just kidding. We don't want to see any more of that. Nobody wants but, to see uh, any more. But you did look better after my haircut. Uh, well, I mean, uh, sure. Yeah. Okay. I mean, uh, and then, because we were being drunk and stupid, you decided to, that uh, your dad was a fan of the show, and yeah. you put him on the phone with me, like <laughs> FaceTime or something, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I got you to FaceTime with my pops. Look at that. We are loaded. Well, you're loaded for sure. I am definitely way too far... My sister, my dad, my mom, everybody was there. Was your sister I, hot? I don't remember. I would I also like to... My sister was a Pro Beach volleyball player. Oh. You she, got any pictures? She played for the... Not for you, but she played for oh. the AVP. She played for the AVP for years. No kidding. Yeah, yeah, dude. Wow. She was badass. I can just imagine redheaded girl, <laughs> curls. No, she's got, she's got long straight hair and it's darker. Look at the difference of us there. My perfectly moshed coif and you. <laughs> I mean, when, when, when I rolled up with Tim and, and he says, yeah, we got to have this meeting about this big giant development thing, you know, that's a, a really big business deal. And they're like, and, and my friend Cord's coming and he, you know, blah, blah, blah. And he's really important to the project. And you walk in looking like that. And I think you just drove nonstop from L.A. just like you did yesterday. Just like I did yesterday, bro. What is wrong with you? Uh, well, you know, the, the, the jury's still out. <laughs> They're trying to figure out what's wrong with me. Aw. Thank you, dear. Yeah, my dad is, uh, he's the reason I'm a car guy. My dad is a car freak. And uh, I grew up in all the car world. And it's funny because when I told him I was coming over to meet you that day, my dad's like, well, you know, of all the damn car shows that I watch, the only person that I think is actually a car guy is... That one Richard guy. That, is that who you're seeing? And I, Get you some of that. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, that's who I'm seeing, Pops. And he's like, oh, that's really cool. That's really cool. So I thought my dad would think it was neat that we were all hanging out. And now he's like, I, I don't like that, Richard. He's not a good influence on you. <laughs> Cutting your hair, getting you drunk, and putting you on a trike. Oh, yeah. I, I got a whole laundry list of things about the whole cut in the hair thing. He's like, yeah, that, that was stupid. I'm like, yeah, well, you know. Well, I, I seem smart at the time, Dad. You yeah, know. Hey, man. Isn't a, isn't a, I like it when you used to get sense. scolded as a kid. Why in the hell would you do that? Uh, I don't have an answer, Dad. It doesn't matter how many times you <laughs> ask me. I just did. You know what's funny is my relationship with my pops is probably different than some people because no matter what happened, I would always just come tell my dad. If I got in a fight and things went badly or if like, I got pulled over and got a huge freaking speeding ticket or whatever like i got one that was 155 and a 65 that is <laughs> so, excellent so i i went back and well it was because there was a girl sitting on the console in my car and she was rubbing my leg telling me speed turned her on so i mean this i don't think I, I don't think i should have got a ticket i don't think so either no i think the cop was you know should have been nicer about it we don't have any control over that at that you, point. You really don't. I mean, I've gotten my share, of, let's call it a virtual cornucopia or a plethora <laughs> of <laughs> citations uh, over the years. And uh, it's it's been pretty cool. Uh, but uh, most of the cops now, you know, especially since I've been on TV, I know within 12 seconds, like m maybe 1.2 seconds, they walk up and it's either like, holy cow, it's Richard or Hello, Mr. Rawlings. <laughs> you know, I, I, I know immediately if I'm getting a ticket or not. I like that. And uh, so, you know, the last one that got me, he comes up and he goes, hmm, Mr. Rawlings. I said, obviously you're going to ride the ticket and I'm in a hurry. So why don't you just get it done? And now they have like this, this little scanner gun. Yep. They scan your license. They scan your VIN number thing on the car and it prints out right there and you're done. I'm like, it's 30 seconds now, not 30 minutes like it used to be. 
Wow, that's insane. I haven't seen that one yet. I, I've actually been really good because in my business, I try not to have tickets. And plus, with the stuff I do that's crazy enough on set, when I'm on a public highway, I actually try to be pretty good about things. I well, mean, I would imagine, yeah. And I, and I had to, too, once I got on TV and stuff. You know, I had to kind of calm down because I did a lot of crazy stuff before. But now, you know, I'm kind of debating. Do I go back to the Wild West days <laughs> of my youth ways. or or uh, <laughs> do I try to stay on the straight and narrow? Well, you know, it just depends. Well, the one thing we don't do is get in the car and drink. Mm -mm. And since we've been drinking, that means we don't have to stop then. Oh, cheers to that. Cheers to that. So... That said, what else do we have to talk about with Cord today, you fucking millennials? Something about tequila, and then I have to go pee. Oh, yeah, we can go pee. I like pee. So, welcome, welcome. Say, uh, my uh, guest, uh, Cord Newman, just left, and we're uh, taking what's known as a uh, man's uh, pee break. Uh, it's, well, he's going to take a piss. But right now, this would be a good time for a corporate shout-out, you know, like, huh? Or, eh? Or, I don't know. Oh shit, I got important crap going on. I've got a business that we're starting that's building like high-end truck parts that were just started in Florida. I just built a 4,000 square foot shop. A 4,000 square foot shop to start building high-end truck parts. Uh huh. I'm painting white floors and all that shit. Whoa! I know, it's pretty. Look at that little laboratory. And, and, and when you say high end, do you mean like uh, like there's a different high end? You know, there's the stuff like with the candy paint and and the neon lights, or there's the high end that's like really structurally sound and engineered. Yeah, mine's structurally sound and engineered. I okay. want to make it you know form over function. So the the or function over form. Sorry, um, right. the stuff I was building in Dubai is what I'm basically going to start doing here. And um, I'm going to do bumpers and, you know, rock sliders and roof racks and tonneau covers and all that kind of stuff. And uh, but they're all high end. Like my tonneau cover, I have a brand new Harley Road, uh, Road King and I don't like having to load the trailer up every time. So I wanted to be able to put it in my truck. Easy well, enough. My truck to load it into the back of that big diesel, it's a pain in the butt. I figure a guy like you would just pop a wheelie and you're automatically in there. Yeah, well... <laughs> <laughs> Probably. I just saw you do it on a train. I should have done it. But um, but no, so I wanted to make it to where you just had like a lot, like, you know, the really fancy rollback trucks where it goes down and touches the ground. You can put your Ferrari on there. So I was making it to where I can ride the bike on there and then it'll pick it up and put it up on the truck like a tonneau cover. And then you still have your access to your bed. So I think it's kind of bitching. And, uh, oh, like, okay, because I've seen it where they, they already do have it that will put it into the bed. Right. But, but you want it to go occupied. up. Yeah. I want it to be up like it would be a tonneau cover. And they don't actually make that anywhere that I could find yet. Well, you and, better patent it quick because this so. show's really, really fucking popular. <laughs> and somebody will make that thing. Well, I, I wish them the best. And, See, uh, yeah. You know, look, they have different See, ones. they have all kinds Those of Those are things. ramps yeah. and crap. But there's one that goes hydraulically. Yeah, there's Hydraulic one. Most of the Harley Davidson uh, dealerships use it, um, and it, it it'll for put the truck bed. Yeah, for the truck bed. There you go. Yeah, there you go. There you go. That's it. Yeah, that's but, it. So um, it just lifts it up and throws it in. But so you want it those, to stop way up. Yeah, I want it to be able to be an actual tonneau cover. So uh, the bed itself oh, yeah. is still usable. Yeah. Because I travel so much. Like if you're going to Sturgis and you've only got one or two bikes. And you want to throw them on the back of your truck, and but you still want to throw all your shit in the, in the back of your truck also, so that you and your girl can go. Uh, then you can. Uh, and that's flash there, Mister Cord. Uh, people drive their bikes to Sturgis. I have ridden my bike to Sturgis when ridden, I was ridden, ride, I, drive. I I rode my bike from Panama City Beach to Sturgis, 109 inch wheelbase, hardtail Springer, and I rode it the whole way. That's good. So, That's yeah. good. I've, I've ridden my green chopper to Sturgis twice. I did and, that hardtail uh, thing once. And I like, yeah, the hardtail thing, I, I don't think I could do. I mean, I that might was, have. It was brutal. Uh, we're building one back there right now, but uh, I'll, I'll probably let somebody else be the test dummy on that. You can be the I'm test in. dummy. Yeah, you can do that. Yeah, I, always, I, I, I was willing. My kidneys are already fragile enough. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. I, Why? I, what the fuck? If I lick that up, I get paid extra. You should snort it through your nose like I do tequila. <laughs> Fuck it. Okay. Get your microphone out of the way. <laughs> you spill it, you snort it. Here, give me one of your $100 bills. 
Are you going to use a nasty ass hundred dollar bill? Why not? I get it back. Sure. Eventually. I think I'm going to go with a what? A twenty. You can't. You can't be cheaping out. On that. Okay, you I won't cheap, cheap out. out. Come on, dude. That's not even real money. Yeah. All money's fake. If you listen to the internet, it's just essentially the, the, the black the web. Webs. The black web. I have oh, never man. done this before. This is very first. You're very good at rolling. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I don't either. Ah! That hurts. Okay, that's good enough. You proved your point. <laughs> <laughs> you can keep that. It's had your nose of it, man. I don't want that. Oh my gosh! All right, it's like uh, the, the, the the that dirt show that was out about uh, was it Motley Crue where <laughs> Ozzy was snorting ants? <laughs> Dude, I saw that. Here's a okay. I have How, a, I have a I do have a problem. I have a problem that's that very hurt? difficult. Does that hurt right now? It kind of burns a little bit. Do you know that I've actually had to snort tequila up my nose a whole shot? <laughs> Woo. I've had to do it twice now, and I do not like it. I do not in, in, yeah. encourage it. No, do not I don't do encourage it that at, at all. home. This is not some kind of stupid TikTok challenge. I will challenge. not spill another beer. And will somebody get a towel? I mean, Jesus. What, is yeah, your mom's going to come in here and clean this? You can't have nice things here at Gas Monkey. <laughs> I've got to use that. <laughs> the beginning of this show is so funny. I do. That's actually a fucking phenomenal show. You're my hero. By the way, that does burn. <laughs> you, I have a hard time not. And well, do, I mean, it, if it somebody doesn't really wipe up on this table, it just kind of smears. Oh, so it's the table's fault. Yeah. Uh, please tell, tell me you're did still anybody, running. Did anybody say that that's a millennial thing? This, this kid. Did you just blame the table? Now a lot of people don't understand that the the the, the millennial here is uh, actually my stepson. Uh, I I married his mom when he was about three. He's my stepson. And uh, no, he might be your real son. But oh well, that makes no, sense. No, that's not true. I'm so embarrassed that he can't even wipe off a fucking table. <laughs> I mean, I would think I, I always I always catch myself saying this because because since his dad was very active with him and and so I wasn't ever anything more than Richard. I was married to his mom, right? Right. Uh, I never was like the stepdad or anything. I was just Richard. And then I think I hear I see things like this, and I'm like, who raised this kid? He can't even wipe off a table. And then I think, well, fuck, 50% of the time he was in my house. So I guess I completely failed as a stepfather. I yeah, feel like so, such a loser. So I have I have this little issue that if I'm dared to do something, I'll probably wind up doing it. Oh, really? Yeah. I actually licked a dumpster in Trinidad for a dollar because we were down there. Inside or out? Inside. <laughs> Bottom or top? Well, it was the top, but it was still slimy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we were there. I was prepping oh, the be dumpster. Be true, out. Cord. You've licked some dumpsters in your time. <laughs> yeah. Come on. <laughs> we know these things. The metal ones or the. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We've all done it. Speaking mm. of dumpsters, 2020 was a dumpster fire. Oh, that was a dumpster fire. God, from fucking hell. I'm really happy about that. You know what? Let's leave that there. Yeah, the, don't worry um, about it. It's not going anywhere. Yeah. It's no, not no. going to blow off the table for a while. <laughs> leave that there for the next guest. Here we go. We'll just put it right in the middle. It's a hundred dollar bet. Yeah. We're going to make one eventually. Don't worry about oh, it. Oh, that's actually a good idea. We should do, we should do bets like that. Okay. So um, is there anything yeah. else we got to cover? No, we, we were dumpster saying. Dumpster licking? No. <laughs> <laughs> and one of them has my Carbonex in it. Somebody threw away all my fucking Carbonex suits. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. How much is it? About 2500 bucks. Yeah, we'll dig that out. Because <laughs> yeah. I can throw that in the laundry and it's clean. <laughs> uh, well, you left your other shit laying all around. You got on on fire and then got well, drunk and the then left. The very first time I came here, I left my fucking boots. You had to send them to me. Remember you left shit? here with not only no. no boots, but no socks. You weren't wearing socks. Who the fuck wears <laughs> boots with no socks? And you were so I, loaded that I cut your hair with a dye grinder. <laughs> and then you just left. And I was like, where's he going? And they were like, I don't know. He does that. He just leaves. It's like I, a ghost I, actually, in the wind. I am really bad about that, too. I... You know if I like you or if I don't like you because I'm really bad about... I don't really give a fuck what somebody thinks. So if it's not good, I'm out. 
I don't, it doesn't matter to me. What if they don't think anything good or you just don't care? I just don't care. Okay. Yeah. I got I, it. So it's kind of weird, but like, you know, we hang out and I have a great time, so it's really awesome. But yeah, that, uh, <laughs> that day was rough, man. I don't even actually remember leaving the shop that day. No, honest. no, but you had a driver, so I wasn't worried. About I did that. have a driver. I you did. Know, yeah, so Fabian that's, was awesome. That's the, that's the problem, you know. As I got a little bit of celebrity, you know, and I don't know how much of that is left. You but, wind, you wind up uh, with a driver. You know, <laughs> you know, I had to get a driver because you know, of course, we had a bar and grill, and then I had a live music video, you know, and all this kind of stuff. And so, I got a driver, and oh shit! So what are you doing? Are you trying to stack? Are you trying to get ahead of me? Well, I figure, you know, I've earned my title. We've only drank life. a six pack of beer each. Come on. Yeah. And we had three or four pizzas. I mean. I had one slice. Well, I had two slices. I had the jalapeno and the Supreme. But um, I had two slices of pizza, and I've been driving for 30 fucking hours. You but slept last night. After you lit yourself on fire, you went to sleep at like 9 o'clock in the evening. I didn't hear from you till 11 a.m. today. Technically, that was your fault, because you wouldn't have heard me from me even after that, but you sent me a message. Otherwise, I wouldn't have called. I was out, dude. I was out so hard, and then my phone goes, beep, beep. Hold on, my Fuck. wife's calling. Uh, Hello, honey. Here, we need one of your tests on the microphone. Say ball sack. <laughs> Say it again. <laughs> one more time. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> Levels are good. Okay, cool. All right. So we're filming. You coming by here? We're not filming any porn. It's just cord. Yeah, nobody wants to see that. All right. Oh, you're going to get your nails done. These things are so rough. Life is horrible for us, isn't it? You went, so you went to the gym today and so you got your nails So a lot of done. TV shows wouldn't have Bye. interruptions. Oh, I love you. We do with wives, attorneys. All right, bye-bye. Random See? people. It's okay. I still love him. My wife tries to check in on me, make sure, you know, she knows true. that if me and you are together, it could be a fucking problem. That's so. very true. So she's as long like, as she's got bail money ready. There is bail, uh, no BS. I swear I could put you in the truck right now. We can go to my house <laughs> and there is a small box that is marked bail. Yeah, and it has, you know, true. it's not a lot of money, but it has enough for most of the stupidity things that I can get into. But so I was saying, you know, as the little bit of celebrity that I had started going, <laughs> Uh, you know, and the, and, the, and the bars and the restaurants and, and the appearances and the this and the that, I was like, well, I got to get a driver, right? Yeah. So uh, that's the smart thing to do because they didn't have Uber back then. You know, now you just call Uber and, and what have you. So I get a driver and I, I get one of these uh, Sprinter van things. And just kidding. First, I had a couple of Rolls Royce Phantoms, but <laughs> I decided I like the Sprinter better because there's more room. But uh, anyways, check this out. It's a double-edged sword. I believe that's called bougie. No. There's a little bougie on that. Bougie. Bougie. No, bougie. Bougie. Okay, so check this out. It's a double-edged sword. This will get you in trouble every time. You know, you think you're doing the right thing. I got a driver, and I'm doing all the stuff right. I'm being very responsible because I'm going to go out drinking. Uh -huh. You know what happens then? What? I'm fucking drinking, man. Woo! <laughs> There's no end in sight. Because you feel like you've got this armor of invincibility around you because you don't have to stop because you've already taken the first step of being invincible. And you just get hammered. And, and the next thing you know, you're getting carried out to your own uh, transportation that has a driver. It's, it's, it's not good. And so, look, if you ever get really, really popular or whatever, you got to have some rules uh, and you get a driver, don't abuse that. Uh, try to drink responsibly at all times. Did I say that right? <laughs> Drink responsibly. You know, um, I hope Tiger Woods is okay. Yeah, but that's let, actually the one. That's hold on serious. a second before you say that. What did you say? Any current news? I mean, I would think that you motherfucking millennials would tell me what's going on in the news so I could talk about it here. If I had to, if I got to write my own fucking scripts, it's okay. I'm, I'm listening. I know. I see you. <laughs> is there is there anything is there anything you guys want us to talk about? Yeah, I mean, is there anything that y'all read? I mean, what did you? What was the last thing you read? There, instructions to Grand Theft Auto Seventeen. Oh, hey! On that note, <gasps> I'm doing a world record this June. Do you want to do it with me? What is it? It is 
three uh, countries. Three, I'm, <laughs> damn it. I feel bad that this has got me intoxicated. How, is you in, um, how are you intoxicated with six beers look, and pizza? A little pizza, a, more beer. I, I don't know. I'm fragile now that I'm married. I'm a lot different person. What do you want from me? I mean, last pressure. time you were here was like three cases. And I know, a and, and tequila and vodka. The um, no, but we're doing uh, three different oceans. We're doing the Pacific, the Atlantic, and the Gulf of Mexico, and then we're doing the United States, Canada, and Mexico in ten days, ten thousand five hundred miles. We're leaving from Motor Train headquarters, returning to Motor Train headquarters. If you want to do it with me, you're more than welcome. I'm taking the Shelby Outsider. Is Motor Trend involved? They're giving us the launch party and the rap party. Is Motor Trend the magazine or Motor Trend the TV? Sure. No, I'm asking. I don't have an answer. there's a difference. I don't have an answer. If it's the magazine, I think I can get away with it. If it's the uh, television portion of Motor Trend, I think I might be banned from that because of my uh, <laughs> disassociation from the uh, Discovery uh, Network's family. Hmm. But I would love to do it. How long is it going to take? 11 days, 10,000 miles? 10 days, 10,500 miles. That's rough. Because you're going to have to have some days ride. in there that are 15, 1,800 days. Yeah. Yeah. So I would I would do that. So you just have to touch each ocean and each continent or something? Or yeah, what? we're actually going, we're leaving from the headquarters in Santa Monica. So that's the Pacific. Hey, we're by the way, uh, that's the where main. Motor Trend is based. Santa Monica. Okay. We're talking about... Like literally nothing to do with motor in Santa Monica. I mean, there's a few people that come through there. They come from Venice or LA or whatever, but Santa Monica, it's like, <laughs> it, it's like Beverly Hills. I mean, come on, but we're motor trend. We are all motor. They hang out with those freaking uh, guys. Uh, you know what? I have an idea. Why don't we just start? Uh, good. Our, you just stop our, me from really fucking I'm off a stop, bunch I'm of people. A, well, no, no, you can do whatever you want. No, I, I needed I'm to be stopped. For whatever. I, lo I love a crash course. <laughs> Anything where there's a collision, I'm involved. I like it. So, so you're going to do no, the Atlantic, I think the Pacific. Yes. We're going to look at a map here. Oh, hey, can I get up and dictate where I want to, where we're going? You can, can be a weatherman. Okay. Like, do you like the whole like weatherman? Look, look at him. He looks like a weatherman. Let's take the mic with you because we can't hear anything that you're saying. Yeah, just take it with you. <laughs> so, so we're gonna start in Santa we're Monica, start over here, which is the pinnacle in, of hot rod motorcycle <laughs> motor mayhem. The Los Angeles, Santa Monica. Yeah, part here. We're gonna drive. All the way across like this through St. Louis, Indianapolis, Pittsburgh, Springfield, Massachusetts. I didn't know that was a city. I'm really sorry. And then all the way up to Bangor, Maine. And then that's going to be our Atlantic side. Then we're going to hit Quebec City. And then we're going to drive all the way down to St. Augustine. And then that'll you know still be the Atlantic side, but we're down here. <laughs> and then we're going to go to the Gulf. And the golf that will actually be our presentation time is going to be in New Orleans, which I love New Orleans. I've worked there many times. It's a beautiful city. And then we're going to drive all the way over here, and we're going to go through Mexico. And we're going to hang out through Mexico all the way up, come out through Mexicali, and then back up to Los Angeles. So this is our route all the way to here, then to there, and then Well, is there, there rules in this thing? Uh, you know, no, not really. We're just going to go and go and then go some more. Okay. Well, then I, then I have a question. I have an answer. If you're just trying to hit Atlantic to or Pacific to Atlantic to Canada nice to Mexico. Yeah. Why can't you just leave that as the rules and it's any man's game? So... Uh, Van, my buddy that, does, <laughs> that does just not, checking the hair. You're still pretty. That's, I, I, that's fine. You're just got to mosh the coif. <laughs> Was that a snort? <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> you, you you get drunk and giggle like a little girl. <laughs> yeah, well, you gotta have fun in life. Shit, man, it might be over tomorrow. 
Or for you especially. <laughs> Who the fuck knows what you're going to do tomorrow? <laughs> so my buddy is one of the guys that helped to design the, the game Need for Speed. He has the Need for Speed M3. Okay. And uh, he had that built this last year. So it's that M3. It's my Shelby Outsider car. And then it's a couple other vehicles. One of our buddies is doing it on a fucking Harley, dude. There's and no way. Yeah, I don't know how the hell he's going to do that. It, it would have to be the cushiest, most <laughs> awesome Harley in the world. It's. I know the bike he's taken. It's an Ultra Glide. It's a very nice bike, but I don't. I couldn't pull that off. Ten thousand five hundred miles. He's more of a man than I'll ever be. But um, so we're taking off from the Santa Monica Pier, basically, and we're hauling ass all the way over to Maine. Uh, at least we're doing a Liberty Mutual. Commercial. So what's the what's the purpose of going to Maine? Uh, well, because the guy that is one of the other participants, his family has a custom vehicle shop that's up in Maine. So they want to do Maine because then we can hit Quebec and then come back down from Canada. The point is to show that we're going as far across the U.S. as we possibly can. But so it's not. You could have gone further than Maine. What's, what's farther than Maine? I'm sorry. My well, geography is bad. That town, you could have gone further up. We are. We're going to Quebec. That's far. That's in up. Canada. Yeah, that's where he's from. If you want to do the longest stretch across the U.S., you know, yeah. it's definitely not Santa Monica to Bangladesh, Maine, or whatever <laughs> it is. What is that town? I, mean, I don't know. What is the name of that town? Where you got to go all the way up to uh, wherever it is up there. Way up there. I think we should drive all the way to Johannesburg, South Africa. They used to be able to do that, but I won't get into that story now. But I get it. <laughs> but I think you could have just hit the coast in uh, uh, up there, you know, south of Maine, and then jumped across to Canada, and then jumped down past uh, uh, the outskirts of New York and down through. Well, um, I am not the one planning this trip. I am just. Doing is there a, a prize? Is it a race, or is it just a thing? Yeah, you win the world record. The world what you, record why is it class. a world record? Is it something y'all invented? No, well, Cannonball Run had these things. Don't you, try to es educate me on Cannonball Run. You got the tattoo of it. So I did the deal. I know. <laughs> okay, so, so everybody knows that story. Let me, let me well, go they, ahead. They have a whole thing where there was a list of different deals that they wanted to do. This is one of the things that they didn't do. So this is what a, is it called again? This is an unachieved goal yet. An unachieved goal of world record status. Yeah. To so, hit so for it's, it's one, for three different two, three, three countries, different countries and three different oceans and three oceans. Yeah. What's the third ocean? The Gulf of Mexico. That's kind of an it's ocean. not an ocean. Look, let's not interject. Is the Gulf of Mexico <laughs> considered an ocean? <laughs> let's not interject facts. I need to know logic. this. I don't know. I don't think it's considered an ocean. I think it's considered a gulf. Of an ocean. An ocean, which would be the Atlantic. Mm -hmm. We're going to be there in Maine. Is the Gulf of Mexico considered an ocean? Is an ocean basin. Is an ocean basin. Bam. The Atlantic Ocean. Yeah, it so, is. so three it's continents. No, three nations. No, Three countries. Three countries. And three oceans. And three oceans. Yeah. And we got to do it in 10 days. That's kind of like making that Coors Light run. Texarkana. Well, I made a Miller Light run from Dallas. But what I'm trying to tell you is I think it should be like a, any man's way of doing it and not some preconceived route. That's what was cool with Cannonball when they did it is you could do anything. It was just get from point A to point B. And now you got... Six points. I'm down. That's the way to do it. I'm all right. I don't care. I don't care one way or the other. All I know is I'm going to get in my Shelby and I'm going to drive my ass off. That yellow Twinkie colored thing LA. you got? You mean the black and red car? Oh, I saw some yellow thing on the screen a minute ago. Oh, no, dear. Uh, no, I know. I have the outsider car. That's my movie that's coming up. It's about... Uh, Okay, we get this far in, and you're just now telling me you got a movie. <laughs> What's the movie about? So we produced a movie called The Outsider, and um, I picked a black Shelby Mustang because the Mustang is kind of the most American horse. We didn't have horses in America when we all came here. Well, Ferraris have horses. so <laughs> I know because I have some. <laughs> Ferraris, not horses. But anyways. So... <laughs> You're so easy to stump after just a few beers. I know, I know. I'm very fragile. So the um, 
It's not on there, but I love that you brought that up. It's so sweet of you. I haven't put it on there yet. Um, well, that's because it hasn't happened yet. It hasn't happened yet. Yeah. What I, is I, this? We, we Google Future? It. We filmed it. I would love that. Is there a Google Future? There probably is. Where are we going to be in six weeks? On a beach. Look so, at how fast that $100 bill drew. It just I, dried up like that. Boom, done. I know. Here, just so you don't run out of those. So, um, <laughs> I don't think that's a problem. I don't even think that's a possibility. <laughs> so, basically, we did this movie. Um, a couple of us got together. They wanted to do a movie about my life. I felt weird about doing that because I don't really see the point. Dude, you've lived so, an amazing life. I wish somebody <laughs> wanted to do a, a thing about my life. I mean, it'd be 99% boredom and 1% sheer terror. <laughs> I don't know about that. I, <laughs> I it'd be like... It would definitely be like 60 40. I think you got like a 60 percent sheer terror. Yeah, L life is crazy, man. And we all have crazy lives. And so, I, I don't know, I felt weird about it. So, I wanted to make the movie more about the progression of the U.S. and where we are as a country and that kind of craziness. And I don't really care about the politics crap, but I care no about politics, it. no politics. Where's the button ever, I want a button ever in here? That, that, that anytime anybody mentions politics, it's like a red button and I want a light that goes off up there that everything has to stop. You were wearing your earphones, weren't you? Yeah, that was probably loud. Okay, oh, no. sorry. We but anyways, everything. we got to watch that politics so, shit. So Anything about I, politics I'm or society politics, in general. I'm not a politics person, but what I see in the, the whole situation is I wanted to create a film that talked about the progression of the United States. Why does that talk about you? They wanted to make a film about you. Now you're making a film about the United States. Are yeah, you the United States? No, because I, I wanted to avoid making a movie about me. <laughs> because they gave me this, they gave me some money, and they were like, here, go make this movie. And I said, do you care what I really make it about? And they said, well, you know, we're doing it because we want to do it about you. I said, oh, okay, well, but do you really care? And they're like, no, just make us a movie. And you know, Is there anything there. more narcissistic than getting to make a movie right? about yourself? I, I felt so uncomfortable about it, I didn't do it. So I, Do you know when I spell narcissism, I spell it with three R's? Richard Ray Rawlings. That's what I'm saying. That makes a lot of sense. I'm just telling you. That makes <laughs> a lot of sense. So, I mean, I'm not, I'm not conceited. I'm convinced. <laughs> <laughs> There's a difference. There's <laughs> right. definitely a difference. It's all in how you look at it. I did the only chase scene that's ever been allowed in, in Tombstone, Arizona, and I had the Arizona Marshals chase me out of Tombstone as I was drifting around, and they shut down Allen Street, which is where the OK Corral is at. Yes, for and, sure. And uh, they let me do the chase scene out of there with the car. And then we finished the movie in San Francisco, and uh, it was just... I thought it was spectacular for all the idea of what we did. Right now, we're yeah. in the middle of editing. We'll see where it goes. But um, it was. Well, if it goes to anything like this show, it's going to be a bunch of just stuff stuck together. Random. Rando more. stuff <laughs> just thrown together. That's probably what this will wind up being. But, you know, the, the overall thing was to say that, you know, it's all about the hope of things being better and the hope of things being able to figure out what it is so that we can all come together as not only a society, but a country. Well, so. we definitely need to. And uh, the, the world right now as a whole needs to figure it out because this COVID thing really bitch slapped uh, everyone. Yeah. Uh, was, and, and that's a global no, statement. There was no bitch left unslapped. Everybody was slapped. <laughs> and I am telling you, everybody's got to figure it out because uh, we are now a world society, not uh, a bunch of different countries and what have you. And we have to act as such and, and respect the planet, respect ourselves and our peers and, and the people that are even, uh, you know, up and coming uh, as far as their, their country and their, their earning and GOP and what did, what, eh. GDP. GDP. No. So we really have Diamond to respect uh, the world as a whole has to respect each other and what we each provide to the world. Uh, even the smallest of countries has something to well, Bad. this whole magical interwebs thing has made us a very small world. We can communicate with anybody within seconds anywhere in the world. I and know. so because of that ability, we have to actually understand that we are a global community. And if you come into anything at all with any kind of preconceived notion where you think you are superior or in a better position, then it's a really terrible way to act. It's a terrible way to be. So um, the, no, the problem with that is and I'll tell you this, and this borderlines on uh, getting our red lights sent out, <laughs> is that the ones that decide they're better 
are the ones that fall because unless mm. you ingratiate the ones that are below you and bring them up with you, That's you right. are destined to fail. I agree. If you do not understand the plight from the pauper to the king, then you are guaranteed to fail. Correct. So, I will drink to that, sir. Cheers to that. <laughs> no such thing as better or worse. There's only being. That's right. Being what? Human. It's a human condition. I gotta finish this beer now. And now I gotta pee, and my beer is finished. You gotta I'm pee. I'm ahead of you. Yeah, I have the bladder of like a four year old. Why, do you have to pee? Yeah, but I just wasn't gonna, wasn't gonna admit it till you left the room. You wanna get awkward? Through. No, I don't wanna be <laughs> awkward. I, I know I have the word wrong, but that's part of, that's part of what my, my dad instilled in me. He always kind of sort of got the right word, but he always said it wrong. So I'm always stuck with doing the same thing. And besides that, I barely got out of high school and you went to college. So why are you picking on me? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, <clears throat> hey, um, when we left. Yes. I kind of think I might have been winning. What happened to our beer wall? Well, actually, when we left, you had six. Yeah. Right. Teen. And I finished my sixth before Teen. I left. Yeah. Okay. And then I started thinking, I have done a lot of this stuff for many, many years. And, and uh, Miller Lite has uh -huh. been amazing to me. It's, it's uh, definitely a drink that I've uh, in, enjoyed for many years. As a matter of fact, a lot of people don't know that I used to actually, when I was in the police academy, at the ripe age of 19, I was actually driving a Miller Lite keg truck at night to the bars. Uh, to service the bars so that I could go to the police academy in the daytime, right? So I've got a long history there. And so That's you got awesome, Hey, dude. don't laugh about this. this is, I think it's so cool. This is getting emotional for me, okay? I feel emotional. Because I'm, I'm, this is like, this is almost like a, a potential divorce. Um, so I, I carried them along with me the whole time. And uh, they were very nice to me when, when we started getting some street cred with Gas Monkey. And then when we got on the show uh, and, and got rolling on cable... And uh, then one day they just said they didn't have any more budget. And I was like, you know what, man, it's all right. I've been down before too. I've been broke. I, I understand it. I mean, I get it. And I'm going to fight through there with you. And so I fought through with them for a few years and a few years. And Miller Lite has not given me a dollar in over four years, maybe five, actually five. So well, while we had a long, great run, I decided that it was time <laughs> Let's go ahead and figure this out. So, I present to you, not the new, but the new offer. We need a new beer sponsor. Now, this is a shameless plug, but I'm telling you, I hope and I pray that it lands <laughs> uh, on somebody at Miller Lite's desk that can tell us, hey, we want to be a part of the, the Gas Monkey family, and we want to be a part of, of uh, the Monkey Trap but if not, so be it, sir. We will be so these are nondescript yeah. silver cans. New beer sponsor. And we need a new beer sponsor. <laughs> okay, here we go. And uh, you Cheers. know what? I'd like to start out by calling out my uh, local guys here in Dallas. Uh, you're the closest. Uh, I want to try some different beers. I want to hang out. Uh, this is not a decision about just trying to get paid. I want to find the next beer that I'm going to drink for the, what am I 52? I probably started drinking at a very young age. So let's give, we'll be nice to the interwebs and call it 30 years, even though it's longer. And, uh, you know, new beer sponsors needed. Uh, some of you local breweries, I know about you down there uh, in the Deep Ellum area and different places like that. I'm willing to give anything a shot, uh, but uh, money helps. It really does because this show is not cheap to make. Uh, I had to make him drive here by himself or actually with his wife without gas money, light himself on fire, which costs money, all kinds of things like that. And uh, it's going to take a little bit of money to run this show. I know that you guys are going to cut this however you need to cut it. So I'm not worried about it. I'm just rambling. But uh, we do need a new beer sponsor. Uh, sorry, Miller Lite. I, I really didn't want to have to do this, but I begged and pleaded and asked you to help uh, support us here at uh, the Monkey Trap. And what? That seems you, you look so fucking nervous, man. No, can you say that again to the peeping Tom camera, the one that's in the hole? Wait. Why? You have a peeping Tom camera? Because it's, it's very direct on you. Oh. Oh, okay. So what I'm saying is 
we need, yeah, <laughs> here he goes. Eh, look at this. Just, <laughs> so what I'm saying is uh, we need a new beer sponsor here at uh, the Monkey Trap. And uh, I'm willing to try a lot of beers. I'd love to try some local beers. I know there's a lot of local craft beers here in Dallas. And uh, my buddy Bob Ross will be here all week. <laughs> and uh, he will be painting uh, a picture of each can that is uh, brought in. But uh, it's it's very. I, 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 this is not funny. I'm no, on, I'm on, no, I'm on the it, I'm on the worldwide interwebs. Stop joking around. I'm on the worldwide interwebs here, yeah. asking for a beer sponsor because the beer that I have truly loved for 30 years does not love me anymore. This That's is terrible. This is like a divorce. You want a hug? No, not from you. I, I want a I want a big giant hug from a beer company with a lot of money. That's what I want. I could put back on my gas monkey underwear and give you a hug. No, that was disgusting. That was horrible. I mean, that was disgusting. I mean, when I was thinking, it, you know, when I made those, thinking about some good-looking redheads, you know, popped into those with spank my I, monkey on her. That was I not it. What you were, yeah, that makes sense. All right, well, now shut the fuck up because I'm still trying to get a beer sponsor. So, there you go. New beer sponsor needed. All that is being said is that... Uh, uh, the I can never say anything bad about Miller Lite. They were a great company to work with, but I'm looking for the next one, or I'm looking for Miller Lite to come here and kiss my fucking ass for making eight and a half years of television with them and keeping that beer on the forefront of everything that Gas Monkey is, no matter where we were in the world. I drink Miller Lite in South Korea, even. Okay? So there you go. Mr. Miller Lite, here's to you. Cheers. You think that was a little too much? I think it was just enough. Just enough? Get yeah. the point across? Okay. Yeah. I was worried. I was in it. I was worried that I've, I'd have pushed a little too far. I was totally willing to go with it, whatever it yeah. was. You know. Yeah. I'll follow you wherever. But I had to remove the beer wall. It now we're awesome. going to make our own beer wall of something else. <laughs> it's going to be a blank wall for now. I mean, the wall's this tall now. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you totally. just can't see it. Yeah. We should just do shots. Okay. What Where's the fucking the shots? shots? I don't know what kind of program you're running here. I don't know. I'm not even running the program. They are. And it's not happening. <laughs> you can't run the I can't go that way. So we got doors taped up. I'm in the glass tube of emotions. <laughs> I want the code of silence. I want the code of silence right now. <laughs> what, what is that? Bro, I'm getting I'm smart. smart. Dear God. The OG. Dude, come on. You have to go pee? Yeah, I had to pee, man. I just didn't want to go with you. Come on, dude. I thought we were going to hold hands. Besides that, I had to take care of something. Oh. Was she cute? Huh? Was she cute? Heck no. I'm married, dude, and she's beautiful. That's true. I have the most beautiful wife in all the land. Next to my wife. Yeah, we have beautiful wives. We'll just say that. Well, I think that's... Well, okay. We have beautiful wives. Whatever. I was just saying. pregnant now, which is awesome. You know you can use that kind of like a seesaw? No, I'm sorry. What? What? Maybe we should start Fuck. over. Yeah. Maybe we should just start. What this the fuck is that? Away. Put that water. away. I see water. I was thinking it was on the table. His water. No His water, water on this set. No water. What the hell? I was getting it off the table. The only time you can put water on this set is if it's going into a glass with alcohol in it. Where? Just kidding. We really don't drink that much. Most Where? of the time, these beers are empty. What? Was there a shot? No. Did you say shots? I believe I've said shots. Okay. Twice. Somebody get his shots. But anyways, uh, no, you're the main millennial or one I, of the main millennials. Wait. You can't leave. There's got to be somebody else. Help. Help. Backup. I, I, I don't know. Like Millennial backup. <laughs> <laughs> he just yelled millennial backup. Uh, millennial backup! Help! <laughs> Get the CEO over here! Wait a minute, is there a... Wait, 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 wait. wait. Your producer is saying there's a millennial symbol? Did we know about this? What? Did we have a symbol? Oh, like the bat symbol. It should go up. There needs to be a millennial symbol. What I need is a, a beer assistant symbol. <laughs> I've been threatening for years now to, to put a button in here that I wear, you know, that, that it has the little lights go off. And 
Look, look at that. Look, look, look. 81 no, and no, 96. No, 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 no. The, four, the fourth one up. No, go back. The fourth one over. That is a millennial. <laughs> that is a millennial. That right there is a millennial being dumped into a, uh, uh, a, what are those things called? Diaphragms that they put up there? That's a millennial dump right there. Dude, that is a flash tire symbol. No, that's that is a, a warning that your tire is low. You know what? And there is not a millennial in the world that knows what that is, even when it comes on in their dash. <laughs> this guy right here actually told me the other day he couldn't drive in the ice because his, he didn't have all, uh, all weather tires. Well, Did your little symbol <laughs> tell you? <laughs> because I looked over and it was flat. You know what? I'm going to give you a little piece of advice that the older generations know. All right? Here's, hold on. Here's a piece of advice that the older generations will know. And I will bestow oh upon you this advice, as my father did when I was very upset one day when I couldn't drive my 1974 Comet to school. Because I had a, a cool, flat tire. That's actually, you know, that's an underrated car. I know. That is a very cool car. I had a very cool car. And I said, I came in and I was upset. I'm like, Dad, I got a flat. And he goes, <laughs> how do you know? And I said, well, it's flat. Like, you can see it. It's just laying there on the ground. And he goes, well, son, it's only flat on the bottom. <laughs> Well, I mean, the rest of it is still technically round. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that. There's my comment. Okay, this one Dude, I built. that is a very cool car. This one I built to mimic the one I had in uh, high school uh, because I couldn't find my actual car. But that car had a six-cylinder, uh, 250cc, or CI, six-cylinder, uh, wow. 250ci six-cylinder. Uh, it had uh, an automatic transmission. It had power steering, power brakes. Uh, we gave it away uh, on uh, one of the news stations, actually. I believe it was NBC, wasn't it? Oh, wow. It's got a six in it. And, six uh, automatic. Just a beautiful car. But that is actually how mine was set up. And believe it or not, I, because we didn't how have How long did Ford run that, that automatic shifter? That is in every that Ford vehicle. That started in 64 forever. and a half yeah. in the Mustang. And, it, and it, that, that's in that's 74. tons of different cars. It, it went to about 77 or 78. Dude. They really definitely got their money's worth out of that casting. But uh, I wish I, I could find car, my car. Though. But I mean, the kids ridiculed me relentlessly over that. It was uh, why? Because it, it was uh, six power, so it was a six cylinder. Because it was a six it's probably cylinder, a one wheel a, wonder too, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a one wheel wonder. Only if you were power braking, <laughs> and only because I was smart enough to take the brakes off that side, it, it did it a little better than the rest. And. Uh, <laughs> and what have you, but uh, it was green. They called it the Comet Vomit. They told me that uh, it sucked and all this kind of stuff. And meanwhile, I'm you in the back the, of the bleachers the, the with the their car girlfriends. That I want to find. So I've had a lot of different vehicles, but my dad and mom, well, actually, before my mom, my dad had a 63 Corvette split window that had the license plate XNA402. And he had that car, a California license plate XNA402. And my dad built tons of Corvettes. There's What's X and A four hundred two mean? It didn't mean anything. It's just the number that was on the license plate that was given. Well, why to him are you by putting California. such emphasis on it on this story? Well, because if there's anybody out there that can find that car, I will buy it. It because probably doesn't still have that license plate. I don't care, but they'd be able to figure out what the freaking VIN number is. I can't. I'm retarded, and uh, hey, or I'm simple. It's okay. I'm simple. I'll use that word. And um, but yeah, so my dad had. Um, I don't know. We've probably had. 250, 363 split windows over the years. What? But oh, we've had tons of Corvette. My Pops was uh, one of the premier Corvette guys in California. Oh, you say he was Marines? Time. Yeah. He was oh, Marine. yeah. Marines like Corvettes, man. Yeah. And, and he built Corvettes for yeah. 25, 30 years. For some reason, though, if you look at uh, all the uh, services um, or, or the different branches of service, the Marines like their Corvettes, man. <laughs> yeah, dude. They're an incredible car. They're at a great price. Now, Granted, those are no longer at a great price. No, but, it's ridiculous. Uh, a shit box is like insane, 60, 70 grand. Insane prices for them recently. By the way, I still am madly in love with that 59. But anyway, I do have a 59 Corvette over here. That's what I said. I was madly I'll in love with I'll make you a package deal. 59 Corvette and 60. Or, and I'll make you a package deal. 59 Corvette and the Scrambler. Matter of fact, if you buy the Corvette I'll, and the chassis that goes with it, I'll throw in the Scrambler. 
I'm getting so close. I can it's feel making it. it so difficult to say no. <laughs> so you still, uh, but yeah. So, so that so that Corvette is a car I would love to find. Okay, I would love to find. And that it car. has a license plate called XNA four hundred two California license plate from about nineteen seventy three or four. So is this black or blue plate? It was a many different colors. My dad ha- owned that car off and on probably six different times from nineteen seventy to nineteen seventy four. And uh, when he met my mom was the last time that he he had that car. Drove it to California. God, those moms, they always just. <laughs> <laughs> he actually, they were so they they were broke, and so he actually sold the front clip off the car for the cash to be able to drive back to California to start another Corvette shop. But he drove the car. He drove the car with, with no, no front clip, clip on it. I, this is a great. I, this is a great man. I have to meet this guy. <laughs> yeah, dude. Seriously, pops is. My mom and dad have. They're forty five years together, which is amazing. Uh, their their wedding anniversary and my son's birthday are the same day, December twenty eighth. And uh, I, I have two little boys that are amazing. But the my my first boy was born on their birth on their uh, sorry their anniversary, and uh, it was just super freaking cool. I man. gotta tell you, man. That is really cool. I love family stories, but let's get on to something else. Yeah. <laughs> so we were off camera just saying to go off microphone. This 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 uh, this millennial to my left here was talking about uh, it being a joke about shit on your pillowcase can cause pink eye. <laughs> I, I don't, is that true? Dude. I didn't know we were going to start right back to that. And but then he um, says, and then yeah, he, that's that's a thing. Yeah, don't don't. And then he says that that was a joke in his family that uh, you know the, the brothers or the sisters get pissed. Like, I'm going to shit in your pillowcase. <laughs> if I went to the trouble to shit in your pillowcase, it would not be laying on your bed. I would be beating you with it. <laughs> no, so my I had, I had a group of friends of mine in college that, <laughs> that they, they were. <laughs> oh hey, look. Canada, don't start it. Hey. You're, you're the one that has no friends. Hey, this is not y'all's show. Shut yeah. the fuck up. I mean, <laughs> shut so, up. So we, How do you tell a millennial to shut up? I, ignore them. Yeah, no. They go away. They, they, do just, this, they, they just stop just, for a second in awe, and then they go back to this. <laughs> <laughs> they, they need to say There is nine million results for can you get pink eye from poop? Nine million people ask this. Nine million one hundred. No, nine million results. So I don't know how many people that means. (laughs) Wait, 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 wait. I know that you can't if someone touches an infected person's genitals and then rubs his or her own eye or touches a contact lens, the infection can spread to the eye. Some kinds of pink eye are non-infectious, such as allergic conjunctivitis, whatever, conjunctivitis, conjunctivitis caused by an allergic reaction. Yes, I was allergic to the shit you put in my eye. That's what it was. You want to have an alien talk? Oh, I would love to have an alien talk. But first, shots. Oh, here's where the alien talk gets really good. Now, see, good. you might have thought that I put this uh, green tape on here so that uh, you didn't know what I was going to serve you. But the fact is, it is vodka. And the other fact is, there's green tape on it because we don't have a vodka sponsor either. Ta-da! So, anyways, if you're anybody except for Tito's, give me a call. Because since Tito's sold out, it sucks. Actually, I don't think it ever sold out. Let me let me redo that. No, t- uh, editor. <laughs> so, you may think that I put this green stuff on here because uh, I wanted you to not know what you're drinking. But the truth is, it's vodka. I'll be nice. I'm telling you the truth. But we don't have a vodka sponsor. So, if you're anybody but Tito's, because everybody drinks that, I'd like to drink something cool. Um, give me a call. We like vodka here, too. Cheers. What are you doing? Oh, you just put... Oh. I'm proving it's empty. And because, you know, being in the film industry, I'm pretty good about understanding sponsorships. I got that shit right there. Look at that. Bro. Oh, my gosh. You know what I want to do? You, bro. you know I what I want to do with this sponsorship stuff? What do you want to do? Because, uh, you know, to a point, I don't really have to have a bunch of money. I mean, things were good to me, and, and uh, I've had a good life. I want to be able to waste it on cool shit, you know? There's this Look. dude. Can I talk about that dude? Yeah, there's this dude on uh, Twitch... 
and he makes so much money that he just wastes it on stuff. I mean, he doesn't waste it on bad stuff. He gives away stuff and he gives away things and that gets him more followers, which gets him more sponsorships, which gets him more money. And, and, and that's it. So, you know, if somebody were to walk in the door right now and say, Hey, I want to sponsor this for 50 grand. You know what we're going to do with that 50 grand? We're going to fucking give it away. Do some cool we're going to pay some forward. We're going to do some cool shit. We're going to have some fun. What the fuck just happened? <laughs> yeah, that's Mr. Beast. He does all kinds of crazy shit. Dude, so that's awesome. Um, you know, uh, as a matter of fact, for the first sponsor that steps up and gives us like uh, fifty grand, I'm gonna I'm gonna give that away to struggling garages and mechanic shops that have been hurt with COVID, et cetera, and so forth. I don't even want a dime of it. As that's a matter awesome. of fact, fuck that. Watch this. I'm gonna one up it before we toast. I'm going to put in 50 grand to match that 50 grand. So that's a hundred grand. And we're going to do 10, $10,000 freaking grants to struggling businesses in the automotive motorcycle industries that suffered from COVID and, or the latest, latest cold snap. Fuck yeah, bro. Boom. That's there you go. Get you some of that. Hey, drink your shot. What? I like your camera too. I'm you can't saying. be on. This is the Richard camera. Uh, that's the cord camera. And that's the Richard and cord camera. I get confused. That's some pretty good no-name vodka. Insert name here. I feel like I'm in a Wayne's World commercial. I know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, keep your ears over there. I'll keep mine here. Okay. I don't want to drink after you. I know where you've been. I know. I... We're getting into the last segment, which we're not going to use that. Is there cut. a last segment? <laughs> no. This does not have to end. This can go for 12 hours. I don't care. I dare you. I've got stamina. Oh, do you? What are you digging for? That fucking goddamn yellow pages size wallet ears? I got five bucks. <laughs> I already gave you a hundred, so now you have a hundred and five. Oh, well then I got a hundred and five bucks. There you go. All right, so here we go. All right. Jesus ready. Christ, I think that thing cracked the floor. <laughs> All right. So we were gonna get into a little thing about aliens. Yeah. So what do you got? Uh, you go first, and then I'll tell you what I think. Okay, so here's where it all gets weird. I have had a very bizarre life. I've lived all over the world, as we've talked about, and I have seen some super weird shit. Dude, I was in Dubai once. We were out dune bashing with friends. I had a bunch of my family What there. is this dune bashing? It's when you take your vehicles, and you drive out into the desert, and you just drive over okay, all these you're dunes. Just, you're just yeah. duning. Yeah. yeah, you're just dune, dune bashing. So, swear to God... Dubai is a place that I, I'm madly in love with. I love the country. I love the people. I love everything about it. So I like the fact that it's full of Russian Instagram models. I digress. <laughs> Please go ahead and let's go back to the alien talk. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so anyway. I said that in the nicest way you, possible. You did. You did. Um, <laughs> memories they <laughs> i think we need to release this shit tomorrow <laughs> so um anyway we were out in the desert me and some of my friends my two sons were there and uh we were <laughs> we had put up this blanket we were out in my hummer and we had my hummer parked up here with a blanket laid out and dude we're like 50k 50 kilometers from anything and all of a sudden <laughs> this orange light is just Setting there maybe 200 yards off the desert, maybe a quarter mile away. It's close as shit. It's not high off the ground, and it's just sitting there. And so we're all kind of hanging out. We're watching this light, and as we're staring at it, my buddy Kurt looks over at me, and he goes, uh, you worried about that? And me being me. Hell no, I'm Cord Newman. <laughs> I'm like, hell no, bro. I said, I'm not, uh, if it's going to fuck with us, it's, we don't really have a choice. I mean, yeah, right? <laughs> we're here. <laughs> so I don't really worry about stuff I can't That's fix. right. When shit's going downhill, you're in the, yeah. you're in it. You're in it. Yeah. So you might as well ride the ride. That's right. So I'm sitting there staring at it and Kurt's looking at me kind of tripping out a little bit and we're all just staring at this yellow light. And then all of a sudden it goes straight up a good maybe two, three miles in the air. And then it sets up there for probably another five or 10 minutes. 
So this is now a total of 20 minutes of us staring at this fucking yellow light. And this thing has just been hanging out. And then all of a sudden, it goes straight back down to where it started. Then it goes back up, and then it's gone. Okay. And I mean gone. The thing just goes zing out of eye shot. Okay. So fast. So I'm looking at that, and I'm like, well, <laughs> damn, that just happened. So... Do you think it was extraterrestrial? Who do you think was alien from I not have, this planet? Now, where we were at is the fence line of the UAE military. So they have all kinds of whatever that we all don't know about. I don't know. Everybody I'm, knows I'm what not everybody much of a has. There's not theory. very many secrets. There's really not. And it's because, especially nowadays, we've had cell phone cameras and whatever else for so damn long. And so many people are no good at keeping secrets anymore. So, I mean, everybody's told every secret. So... Basically, we all just sort of stood there and we're like, well, I don't really know what the hell that was, but that was really freaky. And then all of a sudden it came back and then it sat there like a mile and a half, two miles above. Did it be like, you talking about me? Dude, it was insane. And then it drops <laughs> back down and it sits there and floats and then it just disappeared. So over the course of probably a, an hour total, maybe 45 minutes total, this thing had gone up, gone down, gone back up and split and then came back went back down, hung out for a minute, and then disappeared. Oh, I got the solution. So I was telling all my friends, and I'm like, what the hell? And they're like, oh, yeah, that happens. I'm like, what? What do you mean that happens? How does that happen? That happens? You don't say that shit. Shit just disappeared, reappeared, took off like... Dude, we're in the car business. We know what a fast car See, is. That thing is celebrating so damn fast. You, you, you are not. You are not deciphering this in the proper way. See, the the, <laughs> the 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 little dot was that was doing this, or the big dot, or the this big thing, this big ball, right? Yeah. This was not the extraterrestrial thing. This was not the thing that was not from the planet. The thing that was not from the planet is what you did not see. For the dot was yet a giant a laser ball that the uh, UAE's <laughs> army was playing with their space cat. Okay. So the space cat was running the around and it got cat. bored and they just turned the deck and laser thing off. See, I get confused. I thought it was something else, but you know, a space cat makes sense. It's what it was. I'm the UAE the army cat. was playing their laser tag with their space cat and you can't see him because he's space cat. Do, do we have a space cat? I don't know. I don't think he's ever been seen. In a space cat. That's that's what all of the UFOs are. I, those are those are laser cats. beams playing with space cats. Damn it! See, that makes sense. What a pretty smart motherfucker. Yeah, well, I'll yeah. go with that. Here we go. Okay. The space stuff. All right. I <laughs> believe that there is aliens, and I believe that they're they are here or they've been here. You've heard it here first. Richard Rollins believes in aliens, and Bob Ross told you. <laughs> Just a little alien it's over here. A happy here. little alien. Yeah, right just a happy, li like a, a happy long, little, like a long, long tube. Oh my his, god! Yeah. So, <laughs> long story short, <laughs> I, I look at it this way. Number one, I don't believe we've ever been on the moon, ever. I don't really believe, do not believe it. The human race as a whole, much less the United States, which has conquered the entire goddamn world. We are literally we take. And we build and we take and we invent economies. That is what the human race does. And if we had gone to the moon in 1969, it was right, June, then yeah. uh, we would already be living up there. We would already be selling condos up there. It'd be McDonald's, it'd be Burger Kings, it'd be, uh, you know, malls, you know, go to the biggest uh, gallery on the moon. That is what would happen because that's what we do. Yeah. So we would be on the moon. Now people say, oh, the moon has no atmosphere. The moon has no this. The moon has no that. People live in Saskatchewan, okay? It's fucking cold. It's fucking miserable. Wait, does it, Saskatchewan have no atmosphere? No, but it's fucking cold. It's fucking miserable. There's no reason for any human fucking thing to be there. People go to the North Pole. There's no reason for there to be at the North Pole a human being. So bottom line is we would have conquered the moon. Right. So we didn't. All yeah. right. And we've never been back. Mm. So we just went there on, uh, you know. Actually, the weird part about that is not only have we never, <laughs> have we never been back, but when NASA was approached. Fuck you and your Saskatchewan pictures. I want the ones full of fucking <laughs> I want the ones full of fucking snow and shit and ice or whatever. <laughs> That's awesome. Damn, man. Who the, who the 
when I saw when I saw him Fuck pull you those and your up, Canadian I was cracking up laughing. Can- Canada. Canada's. Canada. So, anyways, uh, so, you know what I hate about Canadian women? I mean, I can say this. Uh, oh boy, you don't know what you get until you peel off all the layers. These girls are wearing coats and jeans and boots and Uggs and fucking scarves and freaking earmuffs and everything else, and they're like, "Oh, she's got the most beautiful eyes." Yeah, but at least and then you unwrap that package CIA. and it looks like a melted ass fucking <laughs> Snickers that's been sitting in the front window at a fucking Seven Eleven for four hour, four fucking years, even. Dude, at least yours wasn't in the CIA. We haven't been there yet. I only know one thing about Canada, okay? And that's there's a little town outside We're of uh Canada. It's it's Quebec is the old town, right? Quebec City? Yeah. yeah. That's where the old town is and all the clubs that are like three levels and you party and you rip yeah, it. That, that, it's either that or Montreal. Mm, what's the one over on the side where New York is? Quebec. That's Quebec. Yeah, That's Quebec. Quebec and Toronto. Rocks. So I was in Quebec one time yeah. on one of the gumball rallies or something, and there was this, uh, you know, bunch of rich people. I wasn't rich. I was just trying to make a name for myself. I was probably spending money I didn't have. And uh, so <laughs> I'm standing there, the time. and uh, I'm on like the second or third level of this crazy bar that it went all the way down in the center, and you could see the people dance. I guess I was on the second level because I could see the people. And uh, I'm sitting there with my buddy Dennis and Big Chris, and I started to peel off a couple of American dollars. You know, I'm throwing fives off. I'm throwing tens. You know, people are going crazy down there. They're literally, like, getting all riled up, you know, just because it's funny. You know, people are clubbing. It's the middle of the night. Everything's cool, right? One of the, one of the very, very rich, uh, uh, I guess, Russian guys. I mean, they, I, that's the accent he had. If, if, if it wasn't, you know, if it wasn't Russian, I'm sorry if I'm offending you. But anyways, he comes up to me and goes, that is not how you do it. And I said, okay. And I don't know if this is even a Russian accent, to tell you the truth. He goes, in the motherland, we throw real money. And he pulls out, you know, this money, and it's American. And, uh, and, and uh, he, he, it's a $100 bill. He peels off a $100 bill. He throws it out there. And I go, really? He goes, yeah. And I said, well, how about if I reach in my pocket and whatever I throw out, you double? And he goes, okay. I reached in my pocket, and I had a $10,000 stack, and I didn't even unroll it. I just went like this. <laughs> And he looks at me and he goes, how about I say that's the stupidest thing I've ever seen and I give you your 10000 back in the morning when I get into my duffel bag. I said, that's fucking fine with me, man. See you later. Too loose. <laughs> that's insane. Am I right in assuming that I remember hearing you say yesterday that you have a $1,000 bill from like the 1930s? I do. I carry it in my wallet. Dude, that's fucking rad. You want to see it? Yes, I do. It's right here next to my unused condom because I'm married. <laughs> and you might say, why do you still carry an unused condom? And I'm like, I'm very sentimental. <laughs> it's in here somewhere. Very sensitive. Whatever. Now, see, this, let me, let, let's rephrase this. It's here in my wallet. What did you pull out a minute ago besides the, something that looked like the yellow <laughs> pages? <laughs> it literally looked like the yellow pages. Mine was slightly larger. You know. It's not though. I tell you that we can ask the girls. <laughs> so look at oh, this. Oh, here it is. It's got it folded up in a registration paper. One thousand dollar bill from nineteen thirty four. What the hell? Okay, that is. I found that cool. folded up in like a travel voucher or travel that is something. Legitimately. Oh, go to this camera. That is legitimately a thousand dollar note. That is super freaking cool. Dude, I would never spend that in a million years. That is so cool. Well, n- nobody will take it right now. I mean, you could, you can't even take it to a bank. I don't think they'll take it. Wow. But it is real. Yeah, it's legit. And it's not that expensive. Legit you can get one for maybe fifteen, eighteen hundred. Yeah. You can get a five thousand dollar bill. You can get a ten thousand dollar bill, and there's a twenty thousand dollar bill. That is really freaking cool. You know why they curtailed this is because uh, they wanted to stop. Uh, people from being able to pay for large transactions, i.e. drugs or in the prohibition period, uh, alcohol. alcohol and stuff like that. Uh, you mean how, so, the, how the Kennedys got wealthy? I have no idea about that. This is politics. Yeah. Now, I do know that Kennedy got his head blown off down the street. But uh, yeah. anyways, Joe, Joe Kennedy used to run rum. Yeah, yeah. I heard these yeah. stories. So look at that. $1,000 bill. You can buy one right now for around twelve to 1500 depending on the condition. There's Dude, a $5,000 so cool. uh, $10, bill. There's a $10,000 bill. bill. And then no there's idea. a twenty, oh, $100,000 bill. Wait, now, who the hell is on the $100,000 bill? Let's see Wilson. 
Pres- really? Seriously? Wilson? They, the, they, the volleyball? They, seriously, they picked President Wilson. Oh, I thought you said the volleyball Wilson. No, that's, <laughs> it was never circulated for use in public. The Bureau of Engraving and Printing. Wow. Only 42,000 were made. What is that? 4.2 billion? Mill- million. No, 42,000. Yeah, that'd be 4.2 million. 4. 2 yeah, million. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so game wow. this out. That is crazy. I would like to have one of those. I would love for us to pull up the history of Wilson with the. No, nah, we're not going Bank. that deep. Yeah. So, if anybody <laughs> out there, if anybody out there has a one hundred thousand dollar bill, U.S. legal tender. Well, let me rephrase: not legal anymore, but real. I might be interested in purchasing that. You know what's funny? No matter what anybody says, they cannot make that not legal tender. How is that? Because that legal tender says that it is verified and legal due, the, due to the gold standard. So there is nobody allowed to invalidate that. Hmm. That is a note that is available and um, well, optional for use anywhere in the world. I do know this. That's a good poker hand right there. You got aces over tens. <laughs> 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 all right so ah, all right cord yeah, newman world yes, famous sir. stuntman extraordinaire done like a bazillion world records of stunts and uh, we actually have some plans to make a world record of ourselves doing some type <laughs> of stunt uh, we're not going to talk about that right now but it does involve uh driving a car off a building possibly and uh, we're gonna have some fun and we're done are you properly inebriated i am pop Pop, pop, properly. <laughs> you keep looking at the wrong camera. That's your camera. Okay, that's your. That's our camera. I'm trying to share in the moment. I don't want to be in your moment. What oh, am I? Wanna, what what are we a Hallmark hands? card? You want to hold it? All right. Hands? So there you go. First episode of Monkey Trap might not be played in this order because I'm probably going to have some cooler people than Mr. Cord here. Way but cooler. at the same time, he will forever be known as the original trapster. If you want to be a trapster, make sure you log on, get a membership, do all the other stuff. It's going to flood all that crap at the bottom of your screen, tell you what to do, swipe up, swipe over, do whatever. I do not care, but I do want your business, and I would like you to be a part of the trap. So get in it, because you can't get out. Woo! Woo!